But it's the Proco logo, but that's okay. Start streaming, <laughs> and then here. Just wait till it shows up. And then did you start recording in OBS? No. Start recording there. Yeah. Start, uh, start recording. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. So. That's we're live. We are live. I think so. Oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. Nice. Well, it just auto played, auto started. Cool. Right. Um, hey everybody. So today I'm going to be doing a graphite and charcoal portrait demo. So um, this is kind of my technique that I used for a while for my longer portrait drawings. Like, so stuff like stuff like this. Oh, here I'll just show them on like. Stuff like this, um, where I have charcoal powder as my initial base, and I actually start like getting some gradations and like major value breakdowns in charcoal powder, and then I'll go on top with graphite and start rendering details. Um, same same thing in this portrait. You see a lot of powder, very soft things, very soft things in here, um, and then. You can, with the, the great thing about that is also you could take a kneaded eraser and start taking out white chunks. And so all of these whites you see in here are actually just kneaded eraser taking out the charcoal powder. Um, so it's a really cool technique. You get uh, a more painterly effect. Um, and you also get uh, the details of graphite. Cause you, you know, I can get a lot more detailed with graphite pencil than I can with charcoal. Um, so anyway, oh, also we're going to be, or I'm going to be answering questions mostly about portrait drawing and shading. And so if you want to ask questions about that right there, that link, go, go to the Proco page and type in your questions about portrait or shading. And I'm going to be answering it while I'm doing a little demo. Uh, oh, and you could see. Was oh, it covering me or no? Oh, I guess I gotta get more middle. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that that's this is the portrait I'm gonna be doing. Uh, this is from Graphite. I think that's how you pronounce it. But Graphite. They, graphite. Graphite. <laughs> G R A F I T Studio. Uh, we just partnered with them. We're gonna be working with them on on things, and um, they they today uh, published one of their model packs or like a bundle of their model packs on Proco. So you can go to Proco.com. I don't think we have a short link. But just go to the tool, browse tools, and then they're the first ones there. And you can, there, there's a lot of really cool, most, it's mostly figure stuff for like quick sketch and figure drawing. But I cropped, it's over here. I cropped this portrait from one of their uh, figure photos. I thought it was really cool. Um, and I'm gonna draw it today. So um, what else, what else? Yeah. Uh, oh, and then stay tuned till the end of the stream because I will be giving away 50 free passes to Vision X Live conference. Um, Vision X was a sponsor of the Proco Challenge this month, and they're also giving away 50 free Pro passes, <laughs> just free. Like, and it's only 50, so the first 50 people at the end of the stream, um, or when I announce it, uh, to go to the their website and buy or not buy it but use the promo code we'll get it so it'll probably go very fast so stay till the end of the stream um that's it oh and by the way this is <laughs> that's not it this is the this is kind of like the finale of the launch party um that doesn't really mean anything we're still gonna keep like we're still doing live yeah, putting streams stuff out. it just won't be like every day uh everyday live stream or some kind of video coming out we'll probably be doing maybe like two or three things per week um does that sound right yeah yeah that seems oh, like this a, is a reasonable <laughs> amount of things to edit <laughs> you guys have make. seen sean before um sean, sean's my production manager so anything related to making make videos, stuff making guy. videos yeah uh so it, it it doesn't mean anything. We're still going to be improving the site constantly. There's going to be still going to be community. We're just slowing down a little bit. Yeah. We're still going to be working with new instructors all the time, adding new courses and stuff. So not much is changing. Now you can actually keep up with the content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. All right. So you can um, 
maybe start looking through questions and I'm sure and then I'm going to begin this demo I'm sure you guys want to see me just get started yeah um, yeah so make sure you're asking questions at proco.com slash 543 yeah because that's where I'm looking to pull the questions not yeah in the YouTube chat yeah YouTube chat you guys can have fun in there but we're, <laughs> we're, we're only looking in one place because there's a lot of questions that come in there already so um, all right all right so the very first thing to pretty much any drawing that I start is to get the proportions right um, and that includes this so uh, geez. okay so materials I'm sure yeah. all of you are gonna ask about materials so. yeah the first question I was gonna ask is <laughs> okay. from Dennis Voss okay Dennis asking, what's up what do you want to know what kind of paper <laughs> should I buy for the best results in making a graphite charcoal <laughs> portrait drawing okay well that that's not the question I thought you were gonna <laughs> ask. There, there, there's no there's no best results it is what results do you want there's all sorts of great paper I'm using Strathmore something something Here, let me get the pad. <laughs> The well-known Strathmore something something paper. <laughs> yeah, the something line. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's the triple something 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 line, uh -oh. which is even better. But this is the Strathmore 300 series. So it is the something something something. Yeah, it says it's better. So it's not the worst. <laughs> it's the version. better series. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. What does that even mean? Uh, I mean, it implies that so, there's a worse series. Yeah, potentially wonder, a best series. I don't think the 200 is worse. I think it's just thinner, right? I don't know. Whatever. Th this is pretty standard. Um, <laughs> and I've worked on all sorts of papers. I, like, okay, here. Since you guys asked, um, I'm last year or two years ago, oh, geez, this is not too big to show on there. I'll show it here. So you guys have probably seen this already. This was a figure drawing demo I did in my anatomy class. And this is on watercolor paper. It's, it's not even on drawing paper, it's watercolor. And the reason I use watercolor paper for this is because I wanted to stretch it over a piece of wood. And so what I did is I dipped the watercolor paper in a bucket of water, which is what watercolor paper is made for, it's made to get wet. And then I, as it's like really flimsy and wet, I stretched it over and I, um, stapled. Staple. Well, actually, was it was it wet? No, it wasn't wet. <laughs> I go over this in yeah, the demo. Watch the video. I dip it. I, it's kind of like a process to prepare it to get wet because um, once I start painting in some of the stuff with uh, with um, with charcoal powder and water, um, it needs to already kind of be prepared for that. And so I dip it in water, I let it dry, then I stretch it, then I put water on it again with charcoal powder. But anyway, that, that whole process, if you want to check it out, I think I... I we, 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 have, we have a free video on it, and yeah. there's a giant premium. There's a giant premium video in the anatomy course as well, but anyway. I don't... Actually, you know what? I don't know if I explained the process of preparing the paper in that. I might have. Sorry, guys, I forgot. This was like... This was pre-COVID, I think, that I did that. Um, it was during Lightbox, two yeah. years, two years. Ago. When Lightbox was yeah. physical. But anyway, the answer to your question is all, there's there's way too many good papers that I don't even know about, and so I'm not going to recommend any specific paper. You got to just experiment. Um, the only thing I'd say is just make sure you don't get paper with acid in it if you're doing a longer drawing because that's going to become yellow. It's going to deteriorate. You got to make sure it's archival. Um, if it's just a sketch, I use newsprint all the time and that has acid in it, but I know it's not going to last. So, okay, paper done, Strathmore. Next is pencils. So I use all sorts of stuff, but today it's just graphite. Um, and let's see, so I got this big, big guy. Forgot what kind of lead is in there. I don't know. It, it feels like a, like 2B or 3B. Maybe even a little softer, maybe 4B. I don't know, but it's soft. I'll go by feel. Um, then I have these uh, black wings. These three, uh, probably just use one of them. Uh, still gotta sharpen them. And then I also have 
this lead holder for for lead. Um, the I, I like mechanical pencils uh, when I need to get more really more detailed halftone stuff. Oh, there, yeah. <laughs> I always forget. Um, when I want to get more detailed halftone stuff, I'll use the mechanical pencil because it just stays sharper longer. <laughs> um, and then if I'm doing like hair or background elements or more darker stuff, darker halftones, I'll go with these because they, they get pretty dull like really fast. Not, not dull, but like they'll, they'll flatten out um, and the, the lead is just thicker. And so uh, I'll get thicker strokes. Um, the brushes are for the charcoal powder that I'm gonna use after I do the lay-in. And I'll show you guys how I do that. And then these, I probably won't use too much of, but I have here just in case. Two types of erasers. And uh, sharpeners for both types of pencils. All right, there's all my equipment. Nice, nice. So I will start by, I'm gonna use my HB. Um, can you ask me a question while I do this? Sure. This is, this is kind of boring. So, <laughs> Lee1973 asks, what are some ways I can keep charcoal and graphite from smudging in my notebooks? Uh, you could fix them um, after you're done. So you could spray them with fixative and they won't smudge. But the, the thing about it is you gotta make sure you're done. Because once you fix them, you can't erase. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like, if you can't smudge it, you also can't erase it. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, spray fixative. That's the that's the way to go. I remember they used to sell like workable fixative that, like, if you erase hard enough, you work. Can... Oh, was it for graphite? Because I know there's a. Um, I'm not sure. But... There's workable varnish for oil paint mm. where you could paint on top of the varnish. Mm. So it's like, it's okay to put it in between layers of paint. Yeah, I used to use it, uh, but they stopped selling it. I don't know if it was just like cancer in a bottle. Maybe that's why it, uh, yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen it anymore. And uh, these are pretty cool. Let's see. So, uh, if I want long. Um, do you, you want another question? Sure. Yeah, it's um, going to take a few minutes. So I've modified this question a little bit. Uh, Rod Rodrigo Gons um, is asking, what do you focus on to get likeness in a portrait? Um, I focus on accuracy of the shapes. I mean, it's really going to be about getting your proportions correct. Like, first of all, it's going to be major proportions, all right? Um, because if this person has... A large forehead or he actually has a pretty small forehead right um, compared to like the bottom third so you know you, you guys all probably know about the thirds um, you can look at the distance from the bottom of his nose to the bottom of his chin and compare that to the distance or just the height of his forehead you know his forehead is much shorter than his bottom third and so that's a that's a element of his proportions that if I want to capture his likeness I got to capture that and that's like a an easy thing, right? So if you if you don't capture those major proportional things, it's going to be difficult to uh, to get the subtleties um, after that because all those subtle smaller shapes within are kind of based off of the larger measurements you made. You know, if I make that bottom third too small, it's going to be difficult to fit the correct mouth in there because the whole area where the mouth goes is too small for the mouth. And so I'm either gonna make the chin too, too compressed and wide, or the lips are gonna be too narrow. Something's not gonna match up and he's not gonna look like himself. So step one, get those major proportions right. Um, and step two, once you got that all, all right, then it's about the shapes, those individual shapes, like the the anatomy of the, car, you know, the cartilage on the, the nose and um the 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 size of the eyes and the exact shape of the eyes the angle between the inside of the eye and the outside of the eye like all those little things are about you know what his features look like um and but it's not as simple as just making it accurate 
because you can caricature you can caricature um, portraits and it still looks like the person. Sometimes it could look more like the person. Um, you know, take Court's caricature course if you really want to know about that. Yeah, Court goes really over that job. a lot. Yeah. And yeah. I, that was one thing I thought was really cool about his course was you can learn caricature, but you're also becoming a better, you know, fi being able to find likeness better. That is, yeah. Because it's all about true. identifying the likeness and then exaggerating what makes them more like themselves yeah caricature is about identifying what's unique about this person and then making that more obvious and so you can um you can add a little bit of caricature to your portraits in fact we all do you know unless you're just going to trace you're going to stylize someone a little bit you're making decisions based off of what you're looking at and so you're kind of caricaturing you know if you simplify you're caricaturing um and so if you're going to simplify or caricature at all, even 5%, you might as well do it in a way that is more like the likeness of the person um, if you're trying to capture a likeness. I'm probably, in this demo, I'm probably not gonna care about the likeness. It's, a, it's too quick of a demo for me to really, really get it right. And also, I just, like, I don't know this person. I don't know, I, like, I'm not doing a commission for them. I might as well just have fun with shapes. Just draw, draw them the way I, I, I like them and just design them. If I feel like I want to make the, no, the nose even more pointy, cool, I want to do that. I'm, I'm just having fun and I, I'm not putting any pressure on myself to like draw this specific person. Um, so this is a pretty small drawing. <laughs> it's really small. It's like, you know, just a little bit bigger than my hand. Um, and I have small hands. I should have... I should not have eaten my banana so we could have a banana for scale. Ah, oh, man! <laughs> <laughs> need a banana for scale. Always need a banana for scale. Um, okay, let's see. So, as I was talking about, major proportions, it's really gonna... You know, I gotta make sure I start with that. So, top of the head... I might even actually put it a little higher. Yeah, like right there for the top. And these are just big angles. I'm not trying to draw final contours. Um, although, there is a little bit of hair back there, huh? Hmm. Okay. These are decisions you gotta make pretty early on. So, I'm gonna move him a little to the right because I can always t uh, cut off. See, I got a bunch of paper here. I'm just saving room in case I wanna like demonstrate something. But I might as well just save a little bit of room on the right as well. So there's the back of his head, top of his head. Chin. Kind of a general angle from the corner of his chin to his cheek to his brow ridge. And then from the brow ridge, it, it starts coming back in. And then top of the head. How far can I put my head? Okay. Good. So pretty much just thinking of like a Loomis head, I guess. Right? I might as well just put this little shadow right in here, All right? That's that's where this plane of the head will fall. Yeah, I've got a question that's right at this point. <laughs> that seems okay. good. Uh, so Don Baker or Don Barker was asking, when considering your starting point for a portrait. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think in terms of the skeleton structure underneath the flesh or start from the visual surface layers of the model? So if I'm drawing the model, I'm thinking of, I'm looking at the the specific pose. So I'm, I'm judging the the surface. Because um, like, here, this is actually a really good point. I, I've, I was starting with this Loomis head, right? And typically in a Loomis head, you're going to take the middle of this plane and that brings you to the brow ridge. But remember, I was saying his forehead is small. 
So his brow ridge is much higher than that. You're, so you have to adjust your Luma's head to the person. So I'm not gonna put his brow ridge here. I'm gonna put it here, right? You, you, I'm, not, I'm not drawing a Luma's head. I'm drawing this guy. And I mean, I could just make him into a, a very average person, but I wanna capture some of his likeness, right? Like I don't wanna just like completely on purpose stray away from it unless I have a desire to, like I feel like that'll look better if I do something. Um, so I'm I'm making measurements based off of the surface. Right? Was that the question? Or or did yeah, I did that, I misinterpret that? Yeah, it's, it's looking at the skeleton structure versus starting from the surface layers of the model. So I'm Oh, skeleton, not Loomis. So, um well, there's a lot of skeletal area like most of the head is your, is the bone, right? Like this entire um <laughs> This entire contour skeleton, right? This side plane right here, that's that's the bone. Um, there's a little, you know, there's some flesh and eyebrow here, but um, pretty much cheekbone right there. You could see it poke, poking out. Most of the nose right here, or not most, sorry, half the top of the nose is the bone, and then you got cartilage attaching to it. The cheekbone popping out right here. And then, yeah, a lot of stuff in the mouth area. You, you got flesh, and then you got muscle right there, but a lot a lot of the face and the head is bone and so of course you have to consider that um, I just don't see how you couldn't but it's not like I'm thinking only of the bones and I'm ignoring all of the, everything that's on top of the bones it, I'm, it's a combination um, Asari is asking um how should I practice drawing portraits to get better? Focus on drawing finished with all the details or quick sketches with some value? Both. Both. Yeah, both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta do both. Um, read the book Mastery by Robert Greene. It's one of my favorite books for getting good at stuff. Um, and in there he talks about how you know you start by practicing slow you you go through the motions you don't rush it you just try to learn the motions and the the steps in a detailed way you, you, you figure out what they actually are right you don't start someone off, a brand new brand new artist beginner with two minute figure quick sketches they don't know <laughs> what to do in two minutes they're gonna just rush it and it's gonna be sloppy they're gonna develop bad habits you start them off with simple drawings, very simple. So basically the same layer, level of finish. Oh, dang it, sorry, you, you gotta watch for that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, um, you, you don't start them off, or you start them off with the same level of finish that an advanced artist can get in two minutes, but you give them half an hour. You give them an hour, whatever, and, and you let them go through those motions, those decisions in an hour, and then you start getting them to do it fast. Um, and you and you start varying it up, and then once they get more advanced, then you say, okay, now let's spend 20 hours, and let's get real detailed here. Let's go real slow. Let's get really detailed. You could even go 100 hours. There's schools that spend months and months on one single drawing, um, trying to make every detail perfect, and that's you know that is a way to do something. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that. Honestly, I've, I've never spent that long, but. Um, there is a benefit to it. Like if you're trying to get realistic looking stuff, yeah, you, you, you're gonna have to do some, some of that. Um, and I mean like hyper realism. Um, um, and so yeah, he talks about doing, taking the motions very slowly and then doing the motions faster than you're comfortable. So too slow and too fast. And then when you're, you get better at both and then you go to a, a speed that's kind of in between that you're comfortable with, it's gonna be easy because you're good at being fast, you're good at being slow, and uh, you know how to, how to do both of those. Here's one from uh, Eli Abramovich. Um, nice. What's up, Abramovich? I, is it possible to combine charcoal drawing with other types of mediums that add color? Do you? Of course. Have you ever? Yeah. What cool. other mediums? I'm not. I'm even thinking like what mixed mediums would you combine uh, with charcoal? I could do whatever. 
<laughs> I'll try it out. You can put chalk. You know. But like, would you combine like oil painting and char? I mean, I know people will do the um, charcoal under drawings and then. You could. I, I'm not gonna say no. Like, yeah. y y absolutely, you could do some kind of charcoal stuff with with oil. I, I don't. You, you that's very rare you're not going to see a lot of that so you're going to have to figure out how to make that look good you're not going to have a teacher that shows you exactly how to how to do that but absolutely you might come across something new a new way a new look and you can only get that with that kind of you know those meat those uh, those tools yeah um so i say play around with mixed media and, and see how things react um, but I'll always keep in mind how that will affect the longevity of your drawings. You know, mm. um, if you, mixing media is just like an absolute, you, you know, for sure, five years from now, this art won't exist anymore because, um, you just can't mix those things. The chemistry doesn't make sense. Uh, then, you know, you need to decide if you want this drawing to be around for a long time or not. Got a question from Jitesh um, okay. saying, do you want to talk, could you talk about uh, the construction approach versus drawing from observation? And do you have a recommendation for what beginners should do? Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's going to be the I don't uh, know why stand. it's so binary with, with, with everybody. Like, y y these are all exercises. You know, th these are exercises to train your mind and train your eye, train your hand, um, and they all have benefits. Um, why so binary? Do both. I think people are and, looking for the like the most efficient path to yeah, mastery. Ma most efficient uh. path to mastery of what? You know, you you have goals, and if you want to be um, an animator. I'm I'm gonna say learn to maybe construct more to to build to build things up. You want to be a concept artist? Construction's gonna be way better. You need to quickly design characters, so you gotta construct them in a simple way first, not through observing a photograph. Uh, but if you're a fine art painter who just really just wants to work with models all the time and draw from observation, well, you know the construction stuff will still help, but you know balance it out by putting a little bit more effort or more time. On the observational stuff, um, they they are both beneficial to both both of those scenarios, but they're gonna there's gonna be a different balance of time. But I I did both, <laughs> and I think they both help each other. I was more focused on observation though, mm. as. I don't know. The kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, this question might be better for a little later, but uh, Ned Sim is asking, do you have any advice on shading wrinkles and folds in the face? Um, I think of wrinkles and folds as just there. It's just another form. Um, and it's a smaller form, so they're tertiary. They're not, they're not my primary forms, right? So primary forms is like the Luma's head, the big cranial mass, the big jaw. Uh, so like right here, should have put this in a while ago, but like big plane right here, big plane right there. Um, and the plane changes going through here, through the cheekbone, um, right through here, and then Right in there. So front plane all through here, side plane all through here, top plane here. That's the primary form. Secondary forms are kind of like the little things I'm doing right now. I, I got plane change right here of the of the nose. Um, the you know the, the smaller the they're the things that go now on top of this. Um, and then the tertiary forms are like little wrinkles. Like right here, I'm seeing some wrinkles. Um, like little little things in the lips, you'll see little just tiny things. Um, those are tertiary, and so you want to get f first your primary, then your secondary, then your tertiary working, because 
if your primary and secondary aren't working, those, those wrinkles on top of something that doesn't work is not gonna look good. Um, and then always think about, are they distracting? So when you put the wrinkles in, are they distracting from the primary forms or are they helping? Um, so now you're thinking about composition. Um, music is asking, what are your thoughts on the grid method? Like when you take a photo and just grid it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that it's, I mean, it's the same as tracing pretty much to me. It's, um, which is fine. I think if you are, it depends on what you're doing. If you, if you're not training yourself to be able to draw without tracing and without a grid, you're hurting your development. Um, you, you're not going to get better at proportions as fast as you could. Um, but if you're just like, hey, I really just want to focus on color, right? And I'm doing an oil painting. I, I don't want to bother with with spending an hour or two on on making sure my proportions are correct. You just quickly trace it in, and then you just start focusing on color because you just want to practice color. That's totally fine. Um, I would say if you're a beginner, stay away from that for a while. Stay away from that for a few years as you're training your eye to just get proportions down because it's a very useful skill. Um, but then once you pretty, you're pretty good at getting proportions, then um, sure, sometimes you just got to speed up a process and proportions is something you can speed up by, by doing a tracing or getting, giving yourself a grid. You just got to realize what you're doing. Uh, and what effect it has on you. But if you're asking really, is it cheating? It's like kind of if you're playing some game, right? Like we're not playing a game. So <laughs> like what results are you going for here? Okay, so. Um, always just want to analyze if I'm if I'm just liking the shapes or if I want to modify them somehow. I like how his cheekbones are really high, really pointy. It's very structured cheekbone. And I'll make sure that that it's symmetrical. Um, Abhishek Basak is asking, uh, what exercises would help me with improving my observations and proportions with portraiture? I usually draw from photographs. Uh, the exercise is to <laughs> do, do what do I'm it. doing right now. Mm -hmm. You just, you practice getting your proportions correct. Um, although I am doing it much faster because I'm, I'm not trying to practice. I'm just kind of trying to get a nice looking portrait at the end here. If I was practicing, I'd be measuring a lot more. I'd be just judging everything and then scan this into Photoshop and overlay it on top of the photo and see how well I did. Um, that feedback is really important. You gotta make sure that after you did it, you can see if you did it correctly or not and then adjust, be able to adjust. If you're noticing that you're always making your noses too big, well, you th that's a good thing to know right so you can start adjusting be like why am i doing that um rather than just keep doing you know never noticing that you're doing this thing there's this pattern and uh and you never fix yourself never figure out how to get better at proportions I'm making some minor decisions here, like starting to get angles of like the lip shape, I'm trying to make sure that's right. And one thing I gotta make sure I remember as I'm doing this is that this this process I'm gonna show you guys, 
a lot of the detail I'm adding in here is gonna be destroyed when I start putting in the charcoal powder on top. It kind of smears away the um, <laughs> some of my lighter lines, and so I can't get too uh, attached to any of my little light lines. I'm, I don't I don't want to start rendering and trying to make my lines look good. This is really just to get my placement right, so that when I'm putting my charcoal powder down, I know exactly where to put these gradations, so I don't have to move them later. Um, yeah. Um, Nad Sim is asking if we can talk about, you know, having perspective on the face and features. It seems like this is kind of how much you're what I doing do. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the perspective here is I want to make sure that this front plane, everything is in this angle, right? Because this, these angles are part of the box that I'm drawing. So it's, uh, let me. Here, I'll do a little. He's looking down. I can see the top of his head. So I'm like making sure that any any angle that is parallel to these planes is following these angles, right? So right in here, that's the corner of this. So I want to have a, a uh, an angle here that shows that, maybe. Browse. The the nose kind of difficult because his, his, the, the tip of his nose kind of covers the other side of the nostril. But if I could see both nostrils, that angle would be very important. The lips. Same thing, little piece in the bottom lip, the chin. Um, this angle doesn't necessarily follow the bottom of the box. Like this could be, you know, depending on someone's jaw, it could be going up a little more, it could be down, it really depends. It's not the exact angle of this. But um, I just, I, I do want to make sure that I'm keeping in mind what angle this box is at. Um, uh, because this right here, this kind of general angle of the top plane does follow that. Um, and of course, these forms in here are more organic. They're, they're not gonna be straight lines, but organic forms also need to feel like they're following that same path. This is a small portrait. <laughs> not very normal for me. Okay, eyes. Let's get something in there for the eye. It's pretty close, actually. The top, like, look at the distance from the, from the this dark part of the brow, to the lid right there. It's really small. My gut just kind of tells me to lower it down, but his, man, his eyes are really high up in there. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and just for people wanting to ask questions, go to proco.com slash 543. That's where we're looking to pull questions for Stan. Isn't it on the screen? Yeah, but <laughs> you look at text. I, I, we're in a world with so many advertisements. That <laughs> That's true. I walk down the street and like my, I'm blind to text unless uh, yeah, it really true. pops out. Yeah, you're right. And that's how we have evolved to get <laughs> overlay ads with video that take up 80% of the screen. Um, John Hall is asking if we can discuss... Uh, can you discuss the edge of a feature versus the edge of the, the shadow? They tend to look the same to me. I, um, I feel like maybe like really? how you approach. The edge of a feature versus the edge of a shadow? I mean, oh, how, okay. Like the edge quality of an object versus 
like a cast shadow or a form shadow. Um, well, I, I hope I understand you correctly, but like, for example, in the nose, you have right in here, this is a very sharp edge, right? That's the edge of this feature, the nose. And then on the inside, within the shadow, you also have the edge of the nostril in here. Um, they can see the sh the uh, the photo, right? Yeah. Okay. Ho hopefully, you guys are looking at this on some on some big screens. Cause <laughs> 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 I can't imagine watching this on mobile. Um, yeah, and that edge is not as sharp, at least not the contrast. You know, I, I could put it in, and it's it could be sharp, but it's it's within the shadows, and um, it's going to be a, a little bit softer. But then you have a cast shadow over here from the nose onto the lip, and that's definitely softer. I mean, I got at least a millimeter or two of that transition from shadow to light. Um, but then the edge of that same shadow over here, so this side is a little bit sharper than the bottom of it, right? And that's just about, that's another thing you practice. Edge is one of the basic elements of the visual language. You know, you got edge, you got shape, and you got color. And that's it. Within color, you can break up color into hue, saturation, and value. Um, and so when we're doing a drawing, the only element of color we're worried about is value. We don't have hue or saturation to care about. Um, unless we're drawing with like, you know, pastels and charcoal, or chalk and crayons or colored <laughs> pencils, whatever, then, then you are. But drawing graphite, it's uh, shape, value, and, and uh, edge. And so edge, basic element that you have to practice to be able to see correctly if you're drawing from observation. If you're, if you're trying to make it up, you have to understand the laws of light and you have to practice it a lot and to, the, to the point where it's just like you know exactly what it's going to look like so you can invent it. Um, yeah, hope that answers your question. Zane Wilde is asking, are there any bad habits to steer away from when drawing <laughs> portraits? Oh, yeah. Um, like your top five. Oh, man. I, uh, what's the, God damn it, what's that podcast? Um, one of the very first podcasts I did. The Draftsman? Podcast? No, no, not the Draftsman. I was a guest on the podcast. God, what is his name? My, my name's. I don't remember. You, you, you know, you follow, you listened to this podcast. <sighs> I don't and recall. then he stopped doing it. He has a website. I know there's so many podcasts. You've <laughs> That's been a on. horrible description. <laughs> He's a guy. It's a guy <laughs> who did a podcast. That's like every uh, twenty something nowadays. Oh man, can you search on Google for sure. um, like Stan Popenko pod? God, that's gonna just pull up Draftsman podcast. <laughs> podcast? Um, mo like common mistakes. Okay. Uh, because I know you're on uh, scroll. Court Jones thing. God, that was just, more of a it's video. It's just us. The yeah. results are just. We've dominated the on. Google keep... market. Well, for my name, yeah. yeah. Um, Artist Network? No. Ah, mm. oh, my God, what is his name? <laughs> I did, well, basically, I did a podcast where I went through all the common mistakes of, um, for, of beginners, and a lot of them are related to just drawing the. Um, portraits but but okay anyway i can't think of it sorry but <laughs> but the um i also made two other videos on our youtube channel five common mistake top five mistakes of shading yeah and top five mistakes of just drawing yeah yeah so those top 10 mistakes right there are uh probably going to overlap that podcast again <laughs> uh quite a bit so yeah go check out those videos those are really uh popular videos on our channel Okay. When you're, whenever you guys have two eyes on a portrait, like, don't put any detail on until you have checked the angle between the eyes. Make sure they perfectly line up with the angle of the mouth, the brow. Unless one brow is like going up, like the emotion will change the angle of the brow and the lips. So you got to keep that in mind. Like if someone's if somebody's smirking, you know, obviously that's not parallel to my brows anymore. And if I'm 
Actually, I can't move one eye. Bro. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. You have a mini stroke. Can you do that? Can you move one eye? I can do, I can do just, uh, <laughs> I can't do my left eyebrow, but I can raise my right eyebrow. Do it. I don't, I do the, uh, the Colbert. <laughs> anyway. Do the, uh, the rock. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. The rock. It's the, the, the rock. Or the DreamWorks, every DreamWorks character. Oh, really? If you just look at every poster for a DreamWorks character, it's called oh. the, the DreamWorks smirk. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We're happy, but mischievous. Shrek has that in the poster, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. But anyway, so keep that in mind, that the brows and the lips, they move. But in a neutral pose like this, you can you can use that to, to judge the angle. And so eyes just, it's, I don't know. I For some reason, I'm, I always get eyes wrong. They're not on the same plane or one is too close. And so I always have to just double check some stuff. I wish I could mirror it. I don't have a mirror. <laughs> uh, you can uh, show it to the camera and then or do we have it mirrored uh, wait do i have it mirrored let's see oh, you, oh no it's not mirrored it's the same it's in a new context uh, it is a new context this actually kind of helps <laughs> it's really small so it's like seeing it from far farther away yeah. now we have a stand for scale instead of a uh, banana I'm not sure if it looks like him, but I, I'm just trying to make sure his eyes look like they're on the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's keep moving. Um, let me know, guys, actually. Is anything off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Critique this. C critique Please critique. Uh, that'll help. Because, you know, I know for sure, like, every time I do a live stream, when it's over, I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm like, God dang it, I, like, I totally messed up something I could have fixed in the very beginning if mm. I had seen it. Because I don't step away while I'm doing a live stream. Mm. I, you get tunnel visioned. Yeah. Just don't see my mistakes. Like, I would have stepped away by now if, I'm doing, if I was just doing a... I would have taken a break, gotten a snack, gone to the bathroom, whatever, and then come back. Yeah, I know when Ryan Benjamin was recording his... Uh comic demos that we have not released yet we've only released his first video we got a couple more coming but he had the monitor on screen and he and that was flipped and so oh, he just like looked there and he's like this is super super helpful <laughs> i'm loving this nice mm -hmm. um i've got a question from gilvin i say i can't seem to get past the line art process in drawing portraits as i'm always clueless when it gets to shading, how should I tackle this problem? Um, well, you gotta learn the rules, the laws of light and form, and you start trying to just shade a sphere. Start simple. I mean, if you're if you're trying to shade really complicated forms, it's gonna be very difficult. Um, start with a, a sphere, get some boxes, some cylinders, and just start getting figuring out what the patterns are on simple forms, and then you can apply those same patterns to complicated forms, like the ear. Um, Fortunately for this one, the ear is in shadow. I'm gonna put very little detail in the end, but uh, <laughs> but those forms are really complicated, right? The little squiggly Y and the the round donut shape around the thing and like these all these bumps. They're they they are forms and they need to be shaded like three dimensional forms. Um, and if you don't understand, if you don't know how to shade a sphere, you won't be able to shade an, an ear or an eye or nose and hair. Hair is just the form. I mean, look at the core shadow running across. You see this plane I put in here for the Loomis head? Look where the shadow is. Right on that corner. Boom. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Perfect shadow. And then it kind of goes in here because the, the this is a lock of hair. And then it'll it comes back in here on the forehead, continuing that that round part. Um, so this is just form. I'm not I'm not going to initially start thinking of strands of hair. I'm just thinking about it as a round, like fabric that is really tight around his head. Make sure that fabric looks three dimensional around the head, and then I can add some texture afterwards. Yeah, one of the uh, someone came in with a critique. They said his mouth might be a little big. A little big? Is it a big little or a little a big? A little big. A little big. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, compared to the Narrows. It is. Scott. Thank you. You're, you're absolutely right. Because look at a plumb line. So I usually take this plumb line. I don't know why I didn't do that this time. So corner of the lip, take it straight up. Mine goes to like right here on his iris, right? If I look at the photo, do a plumb line. It's actually like right there. So the mouth is way too big. Thank you so much. I kind of relied on this angle I took here. Mm. And actually, I think I, what I did was I confused myself. Because you see that line I, I right in here on his, uh, from his nostril kind of going along his cheek, the laugh line. I kind of did that, and then I think I confused myself into thinking that's where the measurement for his lip mm. goes, the corner of his lip, but it's not. That keep, kind of keeps going, and then there's a gap <laughs> from, from this laugh, where that laugh line is, to where the corner of his mouth is, right there. So, yeah, totally confused myself. And then, oh yeah, look at that shape of this little notch on the top. I made mine really wide. Whereas his is like that. So I was like trying to fit his lips into this wider area. Mm -hmm. We try to trick ourselves into just like forcing these shapes into an area that doesn't belong. I'm glad I asked. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Uh, Paul is saying. <laughs> Uh, the nose tip should be smaller, in my opinion. It should be. You're right. <laughs> I, I was feeling that as well. And now when I made the mouth smaller, it's like, absolutely, yes. I feel like it looked kind of okay when the lip was bigger. But now it's like, I'm going to have to re reassess everything after making the, the lip so much smaller. This is nice. Yeah, it's kind of like a... A Sudoku, <laughs> you know, where you like you, you, everything has to line up in perfect alignment, and yeah. once something changes, it's like, oh man, all the numbers are off. We got yeah, these shapes are like little puzzle pieces that uh, lock into each other, and when you change one, now everything around it just is bigger by making that thing smaller. So, oh well, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so how? I have to figure out. Okay, what is actually wrong with the nose? Um, Zane Wilde is saying the distance from the bottom of the nose to the top of the eyebrow <laughs> might be a bit small. Oh, just the, the middle third? Potentially? Oh, that's what they... Oh, uh, yeah. What Zane says. Ah, oh, god dang it, Zane! <laughs> Zane! You've ruined it, our you. whole career. I have to move the <laughs> eyes up now! Uh. <laughs> Why did I ask? Ugh. I have to move the eyes. You're like, this is the caricature now. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 this whole part needs to move up a little bit and make the, um, the forehead even smaller. I kind of did that already, but it's, it's just not enough. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to move the brows to here. Oh, Zane. <laughs> I blame it on you, man. Yeah, this is not a real question, but Dennis Voss is saying, hey, hello from the Netherlands. Where are you guys from? It's nine hour difference. We're in California in the United States. Yep, San Diego. San Diego. Our address is... <laughs> <laughs> this is our social Not pub. It is public. <laughs> it is public. <laughs> I don't know why. It's yeah. Secret, yeah. Um, we, yeah, we're in California, San Diego. Where is he from? Netherlands. Netherlands. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Yeah, I figured out why the tip is too big. I think my the angle from brow to cheek was a little bit off, which made me, which forced me to extend the tip a little bit farther than it should be. Uh. Luis Rodriguez is asking, what's a good place to find portrait references? Um, um, I know some of our model packs have some. Um, 
some of the the graphite or graphite. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean this yeah. one I'm do using is is just a cropped figure reference from the graphite pack that we just launched today on Proco. So uh, yeah, they they're a really good professional studio. They take yeah. really good photos. And if you have like a high enough resolution image, like you can zoom in, like. Yeah. What That's we what, what we here. got on screen is a, just a tiny portion of a full figure, but because they took such high resolution photos, we can yeah. Do you want to show? Is it um? Is he nude completely? Um, he might have underwear on, but I'll uh, I'll pull up the the OG image. Oh, um, I don't want to make this stream <laughs> rated just yeah. for this one photo. Yeah, let me go. Um, no, there's there's a okay. So go ahead and full screen it. Okay. Boom. So that's the full photo. Super nice. I mean, look at that. You could you could do a really nice figure study from that. But I cropped it on the on the face, and it's also a nice portrait study. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so good. yeah, it's a it's a really good bundle that we got up there. And how much? There's like it's like thirty three bucks for like th twenty five hundred yeah. photos. Yeah. It's a lot of photos. Twenty five hundred photos. It's a bundle of They're photos. Really good photos. Um, Go ahead. So yeah. yeah. Go check it out. That's a good reference. But yeah. I mean, it's all over the place. You can look on ArtStation. Um, yeah, there's stuff. some good ones. Who are the, who, Anatomy. Um, God, what the people we we also collab with? Anatomy. Uh, there's P3D. P3D, which is wait no. P3D is a 3D model. No, they. I got to I think Three. P3D is. They have a bunch of. There's a bunch of. You sure? Photo reference people. I'll uh. Hey, go to I'll P3D. jump to yeah. it. They have it's a, P3D.io or something. I just but, look up P3D. They, 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 it's a little... No, not prepare 3 d huh? I'll have to find them. I think it... Uh, one of us is confusing P3D. Image camera. No, that's not... No, it's not. I'll have to... Go to P3D. Dot, oh, dot .in. That's what we're... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's the 3D models. Oh, yeah. We use that for 3D models. <laughs> what is? What is <laughs> I know that's what, what I'm are these trying to figure out. I'm it's thinking like of anatomy. Pa uh, they have a really P weird URL. I know that's why you're <laughs> it's confused. It's similar to P3D, but it's not P3D. Anyway, um, Google search. <laughs> I mean, I mean there's a lot of bad model photos there, out there. There are. Too. That's yeah. the problem. So. Well, okay, so th this is where you got to know how to choose a good photo for drawing. So a lot of photos. I actually have a blog post that I did like 12 years ago on, on my personal website. This is before my YouTube channel. And it's on how to choose good photo reference. So go go to that blog post and check it out. It, mostly it's make sure your lighting is good because when you look up lighting for like magazines, it's all really blown out. It's made to make people look pretty and stuff. And it, but it's not like dramatic lighting and, and showing off the forms. You know, like, look at the lighting we have on, on us right now. It's made to make us look pretty. <laughs> like, it's it's like, uh, where, where are the yeah, shadows? Yeah, the shadows got, are gone. We got the Snapchat filters <laughs> on. Like, you're yeah. a cat. I'm a <laughs> like, these highlights on the cheeks, they're not actually there. Those are filters. <laughs> it just makes me look like a, a little cartoon character. <laughs> just kidding. But no, like, it's the, the, the light is just like... Ooh, and then I got another giant light source there. It's just a, anyway, you get it. Yeah, I'll post the um, the link to that blog post in the uh, what is in it the comments? The comments section on Proko.com slash four five three. Uh, five four three. Five four three. <laughs> <laughs> so many numbers. We're gonna have to. Oh man, we're gonna run That's out. That's a of lot numbers. of videos we've done. We've, we've done, done we've a lot. Five hundred forty three. That's a lot of video. short links to our videos. <laughs> Um, Do you want a picture in Pip Pip? Ah, there we, there go. we are. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, uh, I'll post it in the, the YouTube thing, too. I'll hop over Okay, there. wait. Did I even move that up enough? I think I moved this one up enough, but not this one. Uh, proportions. God, this is... How long have we been streaming? I, I need to get uh, It's been an hour, so uh, we want to get to the, the, main, uh, the main course. Yeah, when I did this... So this, this drawing... I did during a demonstration in class, um, and I think after about 20 minutes, I was done with the land. So we are far behind, guys. We are very far behind. Um, Matthew Medeiros. 
Yeah. Uh, what up, Matthew? He, he said, I asked Eric Gist if he ever used you as a nude model. He told me he's only drawn you nude from imagination. <laughs> 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 Any chance of seeing this on a live stream? Oh, man. Oh, I love Eric. <laughs> That's the best answer. I can't. I don't think there's a better answer than that. That's awesome. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. We want to see that. I thought I was the only one. Yeah. (laughs) No, I actually, I would not want to see him drawing me nude from my face. (laughs) (laughs) It's like he just has a a Gollum reference. It's pretty funny, though. Why would you even ask him that? (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) I remember when I was in school, like some people in art class would double as models. Uh, oh yeah, not for That's... the not for the people they knew. They'd always go into different places, but yeah. Yeah, so there were times when yeah, some of the students ended up be, or being models, or some models would end up just taking classes and they'd become students. Um, but usually, it'd be the students would be like, I need to make some money. (laughs) So they'd be like, can I be a model? Uh, And then it would be weird, like, oh. uh, Joe is naked now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I was in school, we had, like, portrait sessions where everyone would just, like, aim their... You know, their drawing horse at another student and it would just be a giant like crisscross of people looking at each other and drawing. But just portraits. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big difference. <sighs> okay. I, I feel like it's a little bit better but again guys I'm not trying to go for a perfect likeness and so this is okay whatever is still off it's just gonna have to be off because I wanna keep going with the um, the demo here uh, this one's a little off topic but what's been your favorite thing of the Proco 2.0 launch um Hmm. That's from that's from Wise. Actually, (laughs) um, I mean, one is the my biggest fear was we launch it and then the community is dead. Like nobody, nobody nobody cares. cares, Nobody comments. Nobody helps each other. It's just a bunch of help requests. It's like, hey, critique my stuff, and then nobody like responds because there's too many help requests. But like, it's been really awesome. Like the community has been amazing. Yeah. Um. So my fears. Are gone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a high quality been, community. I think people are yeah. just thirsty for a good art community. Like, because what you got like Instagram, you can't really nah, build a community. You got Facebook, which is just like a cesspit. But of, we couldn't. I mean, we tried to do the the Facebook groups, but it's the problem with fa- doing Facebook groups is there's too many people on Facebook, and so you got. We have like a hundred thousand people in the in some of those groups, yeah. And most of the people, like not most of the people, but a lot of the posts are just like irrelevant. Yeah, it's right? spam. So, yeah, it's spam, and it's just I don't know. <laughs> and the the people that are really in there to be serious and like be part of a community get really annoyed by the spam and yeah. and all this stuff. And so it's just like it's and just Facebook's not made for it. moderation tools are garbage. And they will just randomly delete people's drawings if someone is like, hey, this is a drawing of a nude person. And then Facebook will delete it. We won't even yeah. be the ones to delete it. Yeah. So. We don't have control. Like, yeah. We we Here, okay with nudity. Or this is fine yeah. art. Um, and then just so. spam. Then, like, so much spam. Oh, and then just really inappropriate stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, really. Like, illegally inappropriate stuff, right? That's just like, God. Stop. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm sure that can happen here as well, but, <laughs> but still. Much more we'll of that on Facebook when mm-hmm. there's, like, what, two billion people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. So, anyway. Uh, God, this is starting to get a little too hard. For some of these background elements, I'm going to switch to this guy so I could just start getting more 
broader strokes and dee -dee -dee. I also don't want, so again, like I said, when I, when I start putting in the charcoal powder, some of the stuff is gonna disappear. And so um, some of these edges that I know for sure are like really contrasty edges, like right here, this edge of the hair, like I could put in a dark line there now and I'm okay, because so, I don't wanna lose that placement. Um, And I only do that when I'm, I'm like doing this technique, right? Like I, and you'll see, you'll see. I'll get there eventually, guys. Yeah. Um. Uh, Fred Letters asking, who are your top three favorite portrait painters uh, between the years 1900 and 2000? But I feel like 1900. I feel like you don't know the years as much. But you just top three yeah favorite. no I, I think i think all the ones i'm going to mention are <clears throat> would fit there i think or at least be really close um so fashion i mention him like i think in every single live stream i've done the best <laughs> have you heard Stream of a up. guy called fashion um fishing 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 but you know fashion um <laughs> he's number one number two probably a tie between no, it's not a tie. Sergeant. Number two, Sergeant. Um, Sergeant. And then it gets a little bit more, like, like really blurry for me. Mm. Pretty much choose any big Russian artist. <laughs> <laughs> Repin, you know, Sarov. Um, and then you got uh, Richard Schmidt, Soroya, um, Zorn. I mean, these aren't portrait artists. I mean, they do more, much more than that, but like just, uh, oh, I'm not even thinking of the years anymore. It doesn't matter. Uh, who else? And then, you know, I really enjoy Rockwell. I mean, the, some of the, a lot of the illustrators, they're, they're really, um, you know, stylized, but I really like it. Like Rockwell's, you know, caricatured, stuff is really awesome even though they're not portraits but the portraits within the illustrations i really love them um i feel like i need to start the uh the the actual Shading. the next step i'm not going to do any more laying stuff so okay so i need to make sure that all these areas there there's at least a few little dark notes that if, if i accidentally lose too much in an area I can quickly figure things out again because I've got some key lines dark. I don't want to just start outlining everything. That's a, that's a bad idea because then it's going to be hard to, to go back. Um, Uh, John's is asking, how big is the reference you're working on? We are using uh, an iPad. Yeah, so, I got us, what is it? Eight, nine by, eight by 10? It's probably an eight by 10 reference right in front of me right here. Um, it's actually about the same size as my drawing. Yeah. The photo looks almost identical. It might be a little larger. Well, let me put it in. It's about the same. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost yeah. exactly the same as the, so. the paper, yeah. But it's on a screen, it's not printed out. Yeah, and it's zoomed in as you sh will probably, as you should see on the screen. It's yeah, imagine an iPad. <laughs> yeah, <right> this here. <laughs> size. Um, and it's an old iPad, not one of the bigger ones. Yeah. And he asks, does reference size in portraits matter? Well, I definitely if it's too small, yeah. you, you're not gonna, unless you're doing like a thumbnail. Yeah, okay. it, it matters, of course. If, it's, if you're drawing from a postage yeah. stamp, that's you don't, not a good yeah, idea. Yeah, you don't need a TV. Yeah. But sometimes if it's a TV that's like a few, you know, six feet away, that's fine too. Yeah. Um, when I did the, oh, I don't have it anymore. When I did that painting of, of Christian, I think I posted it. Oh, did community. you get it? I posted it in the community. I did it from the, from a TV, this TV in front of us. And, but it was far away because Christian was also painting from it. And mm. we were both kind of sharing the TV. Um, so, yeah.
It matters, but not really, because I don't follow the site size method. That's probably why you're asking. Mm. Like it doesn't, it, it was an accident that my drawing is almost the same size as the, the reference in front of me. And also it, it still wouldn't be side size because the size I'm seeing my drawing is bigger than the size I'm seeing the reference. They're the same size if I put them right next to each other, but the drawing is bigger from my point of view in front of me. Site size would be that I would kind of have my drawing up right next to, and I could like, whatever's behind, I could like perfectly project horizontally onto my canvas or, or paper. Yeah. Um, but I don't do that. I do relation, I'll, I'll, I judge relationships, and not, not the size I'm seeing things. Yeah, if you want to know more about site size, uh, I believe Cornelia Hernes yeah. did a video for YouTube, so that's uh, you can search her on our YouTube channel. Um, and she does that in her demo series. She did the site size method. She sure did. Okay. I f I'm going to now move on. You guys, this is exciting. This is where you get to get see ready. the magic happen. Some, some stuff you you don't plan for happens here and big effects very quickly that's what people want yeah they want like the 30 I? seconds yeah that's like ah <laughs> jesus yeah usually when i drop my pencil it's right in the middle of the forehead or right on on a bright spot where the highlight's supposed to be all right q so we move on to charcoal powder Yeah, this is just charcoal powder. Um, I, I poured it in a glass jar because the, the plastic jars, if they if they melt at all, it just, I don't know. The, I've had this for like 15 years, and so the, the jar just ends up being a mess. Yeah. The plastic ends up, the glass is just easier to store stuff. Um, there, there, there. So I like to start by practicing somewhere else. Just get, just get a feel for it. Okay, tap it away. So like it, you can get a nice gradation. What? <laughs> what? What just happened? <laughs> How long would that have taken me with graphite? Oh man, the secret has been revealed. The secret is to not use graphite. <laughs> no, no, it, it's to not use graphite for for gradations, but. Well, you and, and you do. You, I'm still gonna go over with graphite and clean up gradations and make sure that the gradation is exactly how I wanted it. Because this is just gonna get you like a rough version of that gradation, um, and then you you still gotta go clean it up. Um, but like essentially, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna think of his head as an egg, and I'm gonna just get that big gradation of the egg, and then go back in and modify these little plane changes through throughout the egg. So I'm thinking of primary forms. Remember I talked about primary, secondary, tertiary forms in the beginning? This is where I get my primary forms. Graphite gets me secondary, tertiary. All right, um, I've actually never tried it with a fan brush and I just got it because I wanted to see what happens. So let's see. Boop, 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 boop. Like makeup. Yep. I wanted to see if I could get like Interesting stroke. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess you can, but it's, it's actually kind of hard to control because it's only the first one. So you can get a little bit of directional stuff in there. Not as good for gradations, I don't think, but let's, let's see. Well, actually not too bad. Do you usually yeah. favor, like watercolor brushes or oil brushes or is there a type that uh, you prefer so i have a sable which is super soft i have a bristle and a br oh, and, and a bristle yeah so these are really hard or and which which will kind of scratch mm -hmm. not scratch but it'll it'll get the charcoal into the crevices much more and so it'll uh probably go darker 
right? Like if I if I take some of this, like if I if I dig it in there, it's uh, it's a little bit darker. I guess not it's not too much, but yeah, it it is a little bit darker though, and very similar effect. But also this sable, you guys can see, is has is really short, and it's actually kind of hard now because of how short the uh, the hairs are of me doing the. I've been using this same brush for this technique for the for a long time, uh, and so it's, it's gotten hard. It's it's gone. Like all the hairs. I mean, they used to be like this long, oh, damn. and now you can see where it's just been chiseled away. Like it's like sandpaper yeah. over and over again on that brush. So anyway, okay, that's that's essentially what I'm doing, and then after that, I'll come in and like I can pick out with my eraser any any light shapes if I went in t into something, and it it comes right out. Um, so I love this technique for just big big overall values, and then go in on detail. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in now. Oh, man. Fred says, "Don't sneeze." Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, don't sneeze onto this. <laughs> uh, and actually, you know, it's funny is most of this uh, I've lost. I haven't. I didn't use all of this. You just I lost, lost it, it from sneezes from, and... from, from sneezing or just dropping the jar. Oh man! It's like ah no, and like half of it's on the floor. Um, yeah, you know, having this for that for that many years. Is... Yeah, you pretty much only need to buy charcoal powder like once in your life. Pretty much. Yeah. So I like to start on the darkest spots as well, and then just kind of start to to um, go out from there. But you'll see, see how I'm like losing. Look at that that line I had; it's gone over here. It's, it's gone. So you have to be really careful. You don't just like go over the face, uh, which is fine because this is the light part of the egg. So I'm actually not gonna go dark in here. I'm gonna try to gradate into that. But if like if I put any detail into the ear, uh, I would want to make sure I darken it before I go in because I would just lose all that detail. That would be pointless. Asari has a very important question. Mm. What brand is that glass jar? I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry, man. That that <laughs> sticker has been is long gone. Say it. It's a oh, primo wait. premium glass jar uh, designed only for charcoal. No, it's just a bunch of numbers on the sides. <laughs> the brand is not on it's like here. Like a pickle jar. Yeah, it might have been from food. <laughs> Probably actually. Was that a serious question? No, it was not. He was joking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was gonna say, man, you guys. I'm gonna give you that the Kim Jong Gi look. So. Some things don't matter. <laughs> Uh, when you were doing the lay-in, um, were you using the overhand grip or the tripod grip? Uh, Alex Sebastian's asking, why when is Dan not the using the overhand grip? Yeah, because I'm I'm using I'm not trying to get the um, the side of the pencil. the The whole mm. tripod grip is so that you can get the side of the pencil and like so the, the tripod or, grip is the or sorry the the overhand grip yeah. is when I'm holding it like this. And I'm trying to like get the side of the paper, the side of the pencil to get like interesting strokes. I was, I didn't care about that. I was just using the tip of my pencil to, and and then just trying to get precise marks. Um, I use both. It, it it they they're both fine. It's like not it's not like one of them is illegal or something. <laughs> um, it's just that if you want to get to use the side of the pencil, you kind of have to lie them fly flat. And the uh, the mechanical pencil we were using, I believe that's a Stedler, right? Um, this one is a Stedler. Yeah. And it comes with these refills. Big ol' um, chunky. This is the 2B refill. I also have an H. Oh, that's, yeah. I almost fell out. <laughs> Gotta close that. Yeah. Uh, this is the, the HB refill. And then I was also using this giant mechanical pencil, which is a 
Koh Koh Noor. <laughs> Do you know how to pronounce that? Koh Noor. It's K O H dash I dash N O O R. And it's really thick lead. I forgot what the um what the Millimeter size, size is. is. Yeah. It's like yeah, three. It looks like a looks like a bullet. A <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure if you guys look it up you'll find that lead. It's pretty standard. It's like that that size lead is standard. So see how I'm kind of coming across this part of of the core shadow where the shadow stops and then I have a little gradation. This is the important part I want to get with this effect. Okay, super nice edge. And if I was drawing with a charcoal pencil, that would be really easy to get with the charcoal <laughs> pencil. I just use the side of my pencil, whoop, soft edge. But with graphite, you just gotta spend, you know, 10 minutes getting that nice edge. So instead I just get the charcoal powder, get those in there real quick. Yeah, I feel like charcoal powder also helps you define your shadow shape more than like when you're focusing on just like drawing or cross hatching. You can get lost and have those like weird broken up shadow shapes. Uh, I guess I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you define your shadow, you define your lights. You can define both at the same time. Yeah? I don't know. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Depends. Uh, Kalp is asking, what are your thoughts on kneaded eraser versus regular eraser? Well, you need the kneaded one. <laughs> no, what's regular? I think the, the little square boy. Little square boy. Yeah. Kneaded. Um, I like both. Um, these ones, if they're good quality, most of them suck. But if they're good quality, you can like cut with a razor blade and just get really... Um, really sharp edge that you can you can use with the kneaded eraser you could do the same thing but you just it's much slower you got to keep keep cleaning it and it's super soft and so as soon as you press on it it flattens out a little bit these if you cut a corner you have pretty much the tip of a pencil but now you have your white that you can draw with so the difference is this is soft this is hard pretty much it <laughs> you could shape either one this one you shape with your fingers this one you have to shape by using a razor blade. Um, you also, at this point, have to kind of decide the composition, right? So I'm pretty much just going to go dark, mostly all around, I think. Um, so. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, the danger. Man. No, it's actually not that dangerous. You guys <laughs> saw how easy it is to erase. <laughs> it's not dangerous at all. Uh, You're ruining the uh, the tension, man. Oh, <laughs> this, my is God. A, this is the hardest part. You can all get ruined right here. Yeah, there's. If you guys see all those little dots, don't smudge that in. <laughs> I have to blow it. Out. Mm. <sighs> still in there uh -oh. but anyway it, it, it get erases out it's okay it's ruined man it's ruined forever oh so the egg effect so if you guys look at all the values in the jaw they're darker than the values in the forehead right it's very uh, common to just look at this one area and hyper focus on it and think the lightest area in there is white and then not compare it to the overall effect. If I wanna capture that egg effect where the hottest spot, the lightest spot is right there, I gotta make sure I have half tone rolling down through here. And so this is a great time for me to just kinda of do this and get a little half tone going up the face. But look at how much information I've lost. Yeah. <laughs> Which is okay, I'll find it. I do have, see I made the chin darker so I wouldn't lose it. I could find those lips again, because I have the middle. It's okay. Um, but now I got a nice gradation. <laughs> uh, Luke Valencia is at saying, do you usually smudge charcoal with your fingers? And if 
not why. Um, not with this. I don't. This if like charcoal powder. If I if, watch, watch what happens when I try to smudge it with my finger. Like it, it comes. Oh, that didn't really work. See, it, it like kind of comes off a little bit. Um, I would have to smudge the whole thing out to the point where there's no access to charcoal powder, and then keep going. But then it even then it doesn't really smudge very well. Mm. Um, when I'm doing charcoal pencil, I can smudge the charcoal pencil with my finger, and yeah, I do that all the time. I, I, I'll use my finger as a blending stump. Um, why not? Um, oh, I do make sure I wipe off the oils off my finger. If, you're, mm. if it's a hot day and you're sweating, don't do that. Um, just wipe it. Constantly wipe your finger off on your shirt, your pants, so you don't get the oils. Because the oils will attract um, the charcoal pencil. And then you, when you put charcoal on top of oil, it just goes black. And it'll keep it soaked into the paper as black. Uh, and it'll be really hard to get it back out. So that is the danger of using your fingers because you, you are introducing oil to the surface. Um, but if you just, you know how to control it and you don't have that much oil on your finger, you're okay. Yeah, I would be worried that there'd be like acid in the finger oil, you know? Acid? Would, would that, it, like if it's a, what is it, a lower pH? Oh. Wow, I'd shoot. be concerned about deterioration because I know, like, maybe Man, it's just. I didn't a... think about that. What the hell, Sean? <laughs> all my old drawings. Oh my god! <laughs> Is that finger... why they're all yellow yeah. now? Only the parts that you've touched. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I have. I have no idea mm -hmm. what that. I know, like, some is. plants. If you like, touch them with your oily fingers, and it'll like kill the leaves. Yeah. Maybe it's not enough oil or enough acid mm. to actually do anything. Um, have you ever just deep fried a painting afterwards <laughs> that'd be a pretty good well actually you would beer battered portrait so see how I, I'm, I pretty much have a clean brush but I'm just adding really light half tone just kind of on this side because the hot spot's not on the edge the hot spot is like right here and so I'm trying to also get a soft gradation this way this is probably a little too dark, but maybe not. We'll see. Hmm. I'll probably have to kind of tap it away with a kneaded eraser. Yeah. That's another thing the kneaded eraser is good for, is just kind of blotching things away. You can't do that with this. This is pretty much for just Removing. erasing completely. Well, yeah, this, this question goes well. Laura Beam from France is asking, if you find you get too dark on a portion, do you erase on a all portrait? or, or a portion? on a portion of your piece? Oh, okay. Do you erase all of that portion or just work with it? If I go do too dark on a portion. Yeah, it's probably like, how do you fix um, when you go too dark? It like really you, depends. Uh, like, do you darken I, everything around it to make I it? Think, I don't think there's a specific rule. It depends mm -hmm. on the whole the whole drawing. What are a few simple or, or standard fixes? What, what might someone do if they run into that? Or a whole portion is too dark. I mean, yeah. you could blot it out. If that works, you can blot it out. Or um, erase. <laughs> erase it out. Redo it. I don't know. It, it's it's really hard just to give like a single answer. Because mm. um, it depends on how well you can blot out. Like if it's graphite, you can actually you can actually bl just make things lighter by tapping pretty well and still keep your details. Um, with charcoal, it's it's a little more difficult because it'll just like take out things much more quickly. Um, you just kind of have to have experience with your medium, and you'll know what to do in that case. You just you just need some years of mileage working the medium, knowing exactly how it's going to react to the eraser at this moment on this paper with the way you've applied it um, to know exactly how to fix a value issue. There's also probably more than one way to fix specific problems. So, ah. That's it! <laughs> I've ruined it! <laughs> now you can test no. the theory. No, it's, I just, it's just a little too much charcoal, but I'm going to move it a little bit. And now we're good. So even the eye sockets, look at like in the photo reference, 
the eye sockets are pretty dark. Now the white of the eye right there is pretty light, but I'm gonna ignore it. I'm gonna think about the big plane and ignore the white of the eye. This big plane right here under the eyebrow is a downward plane. It's facing down towards the ground, and so it's getting a pretty dark half tone. So I'm gonna think about that plane, because remember, I'm thinking of primary forms. And that, well, maybe that's kind of secondary. It's kind of hard to, depends on, you can think of it as primary or secondary, I guess. It's a one and a half form. <laughs> um, Matthew Medeiros is asking, this is more for me, but is uh, Bradwin Jones gonna be doing any demos? Uh, yeah, he's 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 an awesome artist, and I'm actually talking with him right now, and we will be filming something with him sometime soon. Nice. Uh, I don't have any specific dates though. Usually we're we're pretty, pretty loose on dates until we actually get footage, and then we go into editing and that kind of stuff. Nice. <clears throat> All right. I'm pretty happy with the gradations I've got in the in this like light area. Um, now I just want to finish up my charcoal stage with like, what do I want to do in the background? And of course I can come back again to it, but I feel like I, I want to get at least a little bit of a, a light, kind of kill all the white in the background so that the white in here really pops out. Don't necessarily want to go full black, but just like a little layer like this is good. <gasps> Be careful when you blow on your paper, spit comes out. <laughs> <laughs> like I just spit all over. And, and when spit comes out onto the powder, it'll do the same thing the oil does. It'll just it'll just soak that into that one spot and it'll make a dark spot. Wait, did I just No, no, no. <laughs> uh, that was for an example of spitting. Yeah. You guys know what spitting looks like? <laughs> yeah. Let me show you. Uh, I've completely lost the ear. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. All that work, all that work, which is fine. I might did the mental actually. effort of you know. Yeah, it was there just to make sure it's in the right spot to make sure everything else is in the right spot. <laughs> uh, Diana Mata asked, "Do you worry about distorting the drawing when working on a flat surface versus yes. <laughs> on a <laughs> when easel? looking? I'm not looking at the drawing usually. So okay, when I'm streaming, the camera's right there." Right? So you can see my finger in the camera. If I'm drawing normally, I'm gonna, here, let me get in the posture. If I was drawing, I'd be drawing like this. You guys can't see anything, right? Which is a really big disadvantage to me <laughs> because I'm looking at it, like, here's my point of view. This is what I'm seeing. You see how distorted my proportions are? Um, it is a challenge, but I've been doing that for nine years now because every tutorial I've ever filmed, every video, I have to think about that. And so I'm pretty much used to that distortion at this point. At first, man, I remember the first several years, it was a nightmare. I would redo things all the time because I'd be done with it. I'd lift it up and be like, ah, the whole thing's off. <laughs> yeah. And I'd re have to redo it. But it's just another like little skill you just learn. It's it's a pointless skill unless you want to be a YouTuber, film drawings. But yeah, I remember having to re re-record uh, some anatomy demos. They're like <laughs> boop boop. It's like oh <laughs> man, like so it always it always crops up. But we also have the advantage of like we've got a, a big screen in front of us, so we can yeah. We I can... am actually looking, but I have a camera blocking the face. That's true. This camera is right in front of the TV that has the display of what's up there. Yeah. Um, but the camera is perfectly blocking <laughs> yeah. my drawing. I can move it in there now. I can see it. 
Maybe I should do that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> all these issues. Yeah. Oh, man, it's all off. The chin is huge. The chin is actually too big. Um, it's okay. Uh, Dr. Zeller is uh, asking, did you mention if this was water-soluble graphite? This is charcoal powder not graphite powder difference it'll be a little bit i i actually i've tried it with graphite powder i don't like the shininess when i'm applying this um i know that when i go over this with graphite pencil and put my darker darks in that part will be shiny let me show you so you see how right here that's really dark look at how you see how shiny it is but the charcoal powder doesn't have any shine over here. It's just the graphite parts. See, like, no shine here, but there's shine, like, right there. Yeah, you can really see the graphite strokes. Yeah, you can totally see. When these are graphite strokes, everything underneath is charcoal. And so it does kind of get rid of a little bit of the shininess <clears throat> when at least up to the middle value is charcoal. Um, I also just... It, I feel like it went down better. I like controlling the charcoal powder better. Um, but maybe it's just because I have more experience with charcoal powder. Um, I'm pretty sure you could do this with graphite powder and it'll be, you'll be fine. Um, but, God, I didn't. Uh, Fred is asking, so once you start adding details, how do you keep from picking up the graphite powder on the side of your hand? And ah, that's a good question. Places? Yeah, you, you kind of need a scrap piece of paper. Because, yeah, as soon as I touch it, I'm gonna, it will lift up that dark spot. And actually, <laughs> I keep coming back to this. <laughs> um, a, lot of, a lot of areas in here were darker, but then I would actually accidentally touch it, and I'd be like, ah, man, and I would try to kind of rub out my finger spot. And some areas just ended up being a little bit lighter uh, because of that. And that's okay. It's not like it's going to ruin the portrait. But yeah, um, yeah, you just have to control your hand and where you, what you touch. All right. I feel like, I feel like this is fine. Um, I'm probably going to cut it there anyway. Yeah. Probably like that. I don't know. We'll see. But for now, this is it. Bop, 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 bop. Bam. Oh, there we are again. <laughs> We're back. All right, now needed eraser. Um, so now I go back through. Oh, this needs to be a little darker. Right. Now I'm going to go back through and pick out the parts that are just too dark now. I've gone over things as an egg, but some areas just need to be lighter. Um, and I, I usually just, again, start with some areas that I'm a little more comfortable with, like that edge right there. And the great thing is that the kneaded eraser can get you some a, a little bit of a soft edge effect as well. You see what I did there, kind of softening trying to control my edges. Do you plan on using any white pencils on this? No. You probably could. Um, yeah, we've done it in videos in the past. Um, but um, I have never tried, um, but... Oh, never tried on this particular? On the, in this, in this uh, method, but let me show you something. Yeah, what do you... So do you normally do it when you're doing charcoal drawing? Or what What do you usually use the white pencil on? Usually you're... it's on toned paper. Ah, okay. um, so for example, this isn't mine. This is Stephen Bauman. And um, I just, I love this so much I had to buy it. Uh, but he has a few areas like there. It's a highlight there. I don't know if the lighting is, is weird. I feel like you... 
Oh, that's there you visible. go. Yeah, that's there you nice go. and sharp. You guys can see the highlights he put in all throughout, but they're very they're very uh, rare. They're, they're, he doesn't have them everywhere. He just has them on these highlights to add a cool element, like a a reflection, right? It's a reflected light, or not reflected light. It's a uh, God, what's the word? Highlight. Spe it's specular light, um, and it adds a, a little color change because this. You see how the paper is a little bit more yellowy, kind of yellowy greeny type, and then this is a bluish color, and it, it's it's a nice contrast between the two. Um, and but his paper is much darker. Like look at how bright white that is, right? Yeah. It it. I don't know. So you would not recommend you or you not personally use white on I, white paper but I more on like tone paper it. i have not tried it so that's why i don't want to say like yes you could do that i would try it and see if it works <laughs> it might work I, I i feel like it there is a pretty good chance that it'll be fine um and i went too far with this light spot i gotta fill that back in Um, Anna from Russia is asking, how do you deal with the feeling that your drawing is failing in the early stages of the drawing? You push through it. It's part of creating anything. You're going to have moments where you're creating something that just is not going the way you thought it would or the way you want it to, and you have to figure out what's wrong and push through it and save it. Um, but you don't deal with the feel. I mean, you just you gotta toughen up. I mean, you're 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 Russian, right? You you know how to deal with feelings. You, you put them. You you lock them up. <laughs> you you lock them away. You don't think about them. Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like once you get a handful of like successful things, you once you've achieved that end result a few yeah. times, then you can like, oh, I know this is bad now, but Actually, I know that. Yeah, it will be good because that I, that happens with a lot of stuff. I know we're editing videos and a video will suck, and then like at the end, it's like, oh, actually, this is great. Like, I need a scratch piece of paper. Okay, do you want me to my... grab a sketchbook? I got one. I got my yeah, Proco sketchbooks. Not oh. going to be seen for oh, a while. It's Proco sketchbook. You really just scrap a piece of paper for your hand, that's it. Problem solved. Uh, okay, I'm gonna come into here and start sculpting out some of these nice spots. Let me know if my head ever gets into the shot. Uh, sure. Because I wanna get really get in there. I mean, I see your head, but it's not in the uh, yeah in the drawing. Um, Natalie's asking, do you have any advice for relating local tone ranges to overall tonal ranges? Uh, oh, um, well, relating them is just about training your eye to see and compare value. Um, when I'm thinking about the composition of a piece and I'm doing like a value study, I'm not, I don't care about what's a local value and what's just a, um, a, uh, a shadow on a, mm -hmm. <laughs> a, a, a overall value. I'm just kind of like analyzing the value composition overall. Um, and, you know, if I want the whole bottom part to be darker, it's like, well, I'm going to have to make all the local values of things down there uh, darker. Or think about the egg effect if I'm doing something like that, where the the light is hot and you know the hot spot, it, it, the light is brightest in this one area and it fades off. Um, so yeah, overall composition, I don't really care. I'm just thinking of value placement as it fits into a rectangle. Um, but then once I start going and shading, then yeah, I do. I start caring about the local value because it's gonna determine my my value range within a specific uh area um but i'm not sure exactly what your question is because you're asking how do i relate them 
It's just about being able to see value correctly. Um, Dr. Zeller made a clarification. She said, or they said, um, have you ever, they meant to ask, have we ever used water soluble graphite? Which I believe oh, you did. No, for, I, mean, I might have tried it. Then. I might have tried it for something, but I don't. I, I do water soluble charcoal. I gotta keep getting up and get stuff. <laughs> My tools are over there. <laughs> um. But I know the the Yoni demo. I bl I'm fairly certain you used a water a water based charcoal yeah. on that. Guy. This is exactly that what one. I use charcoal, but not not water soluble graphite. Mm. I, I don't believe I've ever tried it. But this is this is called Russian sauce sauce <laughs> sauce Ruski sauce, and uh, I think they just call it sauce. <laughs> they don't say Russian sauce. But it comes in these different colors. I think most of the time people just use like the black. <laughs> yeah. but, but you could you could you can mix them. They're very subtle, kind of. Um, but basically, you take a uh, a razor blade and you kind of scrape at it, and you just make it into a powder, mm. into like a little dish or something. <clears throat> and then you you essentially have this. But it this is water soluble, so you you dip it in water, and you can paint with charcoal. And then when the water evaporates, you kind of have this, essentially. But you can also just get like real cool brush strokes with the charcoal powder. So it is a different effect. But yeah, this is the best stuff I've tried for mixing charcoal powder with water. I've tried it with this and it doesn't work nearly as well. Mm. It kind of works, but it not, not as well as this stuff. Got to get the sauce. Gotta get the sauce. It's, it's the secret sauce. Yeah, you just let out the secret, man. Ah, uh, uh, man. Hmm. I shouldn't be doing these streams. I'm not thinking about the secrets. Giving away your secrets, man. Um, this part might start to get a little boring. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll or maybe hold not. Some more questions. It depends on the viewer. If you love mm. shading and rendering, this might just be like meditation for you. Uh, if you if you don't, this is just gonna be super boring. You got to get the mic real close to the drawing, so this becomes a asthma <laughs> ASMR live stream. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, actually, I'm facing the mic is over there. Maybe while I'm drawing, we can... Yeah, it's going to get... It's okay. Do you guys mind if there's a <laughs> microphone on top of Sean's yeah, face? I'll just be... <laughs> I don't know. There. Sorry. That works. Oh, but now it's casting it. Whatever. Here. I hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> uh, the, the, the audio levels look fine. Okay. And good. nobody has uh, commented that I've seen. Okay, good. We finally got it right. <laughs> yeah, on the final stream of the Proco Party. Yeah. Yeah, we did some tweaking yesterday. Yeah, I figured out you can actually control, you can put some effects onto the audio in OBS, which is what we use to stream. So, anyway, yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, Sebastian is asking, is it okay to try and learn every feature really good from different directions and then draw them all together, or should I just draw the whole face? Both. Yeah, Practice drawing the face, like proportions, big primary forms, you know, the Loomis head, and also practice learning the features and the, the, the planes of the head. That's exactly what I teach in my portrait drawing course. Yeah. Um, my very first course ever, nine years ago. It, it's, I start with the Loomis head, then I go into the planes of every, every feature, the anatomy of every feature, um, and just like really understanding each feature. And then also, you know, and then putting them all together. Um, but you have to, you, you got to know both. You you can't just know the features and then think knowing the features are gonna you are gonna allow you to put them all together correctly. Um, so 
yeah, practice both. And not like in a step-by-step, -step, like I'm gonna spend a year on features before I even try to put them together. It's like, vary it up. One day do a full portrait, one, one day study eyes, then study nose. Um, another day just focus on proportions of the head. Um, and do that as you get inspired to do all these things. Oh yeah, another benefit, you, you can actually use your finger to take off, because the, the kneaded eraser will take things off much faster, it'll go to white really quick. Um, if I want to just blot, make something a little bit lighter, I can use my finger and it'll take off a little bit of that charcoal powder. Um, And for people in the YouTube stream that are asking questions in there, we're looking at uh, proco.com slash 543, which is... No, people are still asking questions. Yeah, there's still questions. Well, sometimes guys. sometimes I'll check if, if the, uh, the website is a little light on questions, but mostly not. Guys, look right here. Right, right there. You see that? Mm. You see mm -hmm. that little link? Ooh, that number right there? That's Boop. the number. Proco.com slash 543. Ask questions. <laughs> There's my little douche moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's the promo moment. Um, so I was asking, can I use the same photo for drawing? I see no reason why not. Wait, what? I think so. They want oh, to draw the, this, from photo? this photo? Um, prob yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I you, don't see a problem. Yeah. With it. Um, this video, you and, I don't know. I mean, that's not my photo, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you can. You, you can't sell the photo, yeah. Yeah, you don't own rights to the photo, but you can draw it. Yeah, you can You can take a screenshot of Sean, draw Sean, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we already had the zombie challenge, so it's it depends on like if you're gonna use that photo to uh as the poster of the next Disney movie. Yeah. Well, okay, you're probably breaking some copyrights there. <laughs> right? But if you're just drawing from it, and then you're just going to, like, maybe, I don't know, you could sell that drawing to some one person. It's probably fine. You're not going to get sued for that. Um, but again, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, usually model packs that you buy online... They say it's okay, you know, you can make a, a drawing or a painting from that model yeah. reference and it's fine to sell that. Yeah, the purpose of them selling these model packs is so people can draw from them, so people can um, use them for concept design and in, in movies. Like, I think Graphic Studio, they tip, their primary audience is to sell it to, like, studios, I think. But, but I mean, they're, they're great figure drawing reference. Oh, I feel like I'm going so slow. Um, LF Theory is asking, uh, how do you start drawing faster when you already know the <laughs> basics? I struggle with rendering speed a lot. Do you have any advice? You just put a timer on. Mm. You like force Literally. yourself to do it in 20 minutes. Or... Yeah, or if you're doing quick sketch, five minutes. When the timer goes off, you stop. You start the next one. You you just force yourself because if you allow yourself to keep going beyond the timer, you're not really training yourself to, to make decisions faster and simplify things faster. And instead, you're just focused on little details. Um, so, yeah, put a timer. You know, how fast do you want to draw? Set the timer for that much. And keep trying to hit that that goal. Like, what do you want to be able to do in 20 minutes? What do you want to be able to do in in five minutes or an hour? And then if you don't hit that, you set an hour, you do a drawing, and you just like you got halfway through where you wanted to. Okay, set the timer again for an hour. Start a new drawing. Try again, and you will get faster, guaranteed. <laughs> it's like, do you want to put that guarantee in there? Yeah, <laughs> guaranteed. If you don't. Send me an email. I'll give you your money back for this advice.
Uh, Tatiana's asking, are you planning on making a fundamentals course? What? Well, oh, oh, oh the fundamentals <laughs> course. I was like, I, I've made two, but you're like, we have basic yeah, fundamentals. She said course. she has all the Proco courses. Yes, she knows I'm anatomy's planning. Life. Yeah. No, I've, we were hoping to be more done with it, like ready. Yeah. To have it ready by now, but you know, this whole Proco 2.0 thing it definitely has been taking things. up a lot yeah. of time. But this is the last day. Well, no, not just... <laughs> this not, is it. No, we're, not, we're done. Proco 2.0 meaning the development of yeah. the website has also taken up a lot of my time. Yeah. Uh, ooh, one thing I'm going to have to figure out is I added these dark outlines. <clears throat> uh, um, I might want to get rid of them. I don't know. Maybe I don't care about outlines. I mean, again, look at this drawing by Stephen Bauman. He's got outlines all over the place. They look awesome. Yeah. <laughs> outlines are not illegal but you just gotta remember that this is an element you're adding that's not in the photograph and you gotta make sure you're adding it in areas you want them you don't always want them where you're putting them and if I don't want it in the area that I added it then I should probably think about getting rid of it am I saying like obvious no. Thank you. Okay, good. People want to know, man. People just want to know the answers. They need to know the answers. Okay, forehead. Beep, beep, beep. It's like little brush strokes, huh? Uh, Prezen Jit Basak, which I'm what? pretty sure I mispronounced that name. I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, what is your plan for the scattered hair near the eyes, forehead, and neck? Are you going to use a pencil what? for that? Near the eye? Oh, yeah, this the scattered stuff. little hair. Oh, um, yeah, I'll probably be, like, some of it will be darker strokes. Some of it will be little highlights that will kind of go off. Um, yeah, it's it's all texture. I'm not even, not, I'm not there yet. But, but yeah, I'm planning on. Adding a little bit of texture once everything underneath that is good and ready to go. Just add a few strokes in there that uh, um, we call it something, something, something. <laughs> I was reading questions. <laughs> when uh, it resembles mm -hmm. something that resembles hair. I'm not gonna render hair. I don't plan on like rendering every brush or every yeah. every hair strand. I am planning on making it feel like hair, though. Like an impression of it's, hair. Exactly. It's an impression of hair. My primary concern, the most time will be spent on getting the volume of the hair. And then the texture is actually not hard at all. The, the problem is everybody skips to the texture, and then their volumes mm. don't work. And because of that, the texture doesn't work, because the volumes are not working. Um, Um, Jan Wad Wadga is asking, hi, is the perspective course still being worked on? It yes. is. Uh, it we is. actually were talking with Marshall literally last night. Um, and we're, we're going. He's going full, full steam. Blast. Full this, steam this, this whole year he's focused almost completely on perspective course. And we're hoping to release it next year. Yeah, we have Thanks. several episodes oh, yeah. finished. Interesting. We have a lot of content finished, but we don't want to do the thing where we release and then there's a giant empty space between episodes. We want to get it like pretty much mostly done before. Yeah, the anatomy we can course it every week. has taught us some things. You know, yeah. it's like, um, you know, the anatomy course took six or over six years to produce. Yeah. And the people that started it six years ago, it's like, that's that's a really stretched out time. Yeah. And you want to be able to get those critique videos out in time for them to still want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. But I mean, a lot of people with the anatomy course, like we will see the same faces or the yeah. same names over and over submitting critiques. So and it's like over the years, they've gotten so good. <laughs> so, it's true. Like you'll see people like, dang, dude, like you, you guys have improved a lot. 
Is that a promo? Get the anatomy course. <laughs> Submit <laughs> your assignments. Boom. But like, look at, so for example, I'm, I'm, when I squint at his hair, the lightest spot in there is actually the skin showing through. It's not the highlights of the hair, it's the skin. And so I'm gonna take my eraser and just kinda indicate a few little spots, design the shape of that. Um, and then I'll come back in obviously with some some pencil. I think I'm I think I'm ready for the pencil. Oh. Yeah, yeah, actually I think I had it right the first time. This um this shadow is like all the way over here. I need to open it up a little bit. Um, I caricature is asking, kind of curious, how are you gonna put the ear on this? <laughs> um, it'll just be some darks around it. Mm. I'm not gonna add any light. The, the the thing is, this value in here right now is pretty much the value of like, you know, the, the light of the ear. Th this is black. The, actually, the next thing I do is I'm gonna I'm gonna establish the full value range, because right now I have half of the value range. Literally, it's half. This is a half value. Um, so, let's jump to that. Um, oh, actually, hold on. One, <laughs> one thing, the light right there. Dee, 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 dee. Um. Oh, yeah. Um. <clears throat> Where's my dark pencil? To be like a. I haven't even used these. Um, Farouk is asking any good alternative to Conte's Wolf Carbon pencils? They are not easily available in other countries. Wolf Carbons? Yeah. Uh, if you let me, yeah, let me know if you find them. They haven't <laughs> been around for. Oh wait, Wolf Carbons. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the. Yeah, the, you're thinking the about old those. Primos. Yeah. Uh, Old Primo. Yeah. Those are hard to get. Someone gave, who was it? One Jeff, of the, they gave me one of them. Yeah, but also, um, uh, one of the guys from... Oh! Yeah, one of the guys from the Comic-Con video. Um, I'll have to look up his name, but... Uh, I'll pull it up. Uh, but he gave us some. It was like a, it was like the Pulp Fiction moment, where it's like, oh, yeah, light. He's got <laughs> a bunch of old Primos. But yeah. Wolf Carbon, I don't know. I, I don't use them that much. I can get them easily, so I haven't done research on where to everybody in each country can get them you know sorry um i guess is there a similar pencil that you know of or um there's the ritmos ritmos um or wait it's the old ritmos i think that are the amazing something ones. is rare but there are the new ritmos which are not as good as the old ones but are still really good and I think they're similar to the Wolf Carbons, but they they all have a slightly different feel. Um, but you could you could um, get really good drawings with all of them. So, Conte, Primo, Ritmo. Um, what's the mate? The big one. Um, I forgot the big one. There's there's a major one. Bic, <laughs> which I don't use as much, but. These are all two Bs. Pick. Yeah. And you said this is a four, this is a two B oh, or a man. four B. You said you're going darker with this one, right? Yeah, but this doesn't fit in there. I don't think. Maybe it does. Oh yeah, it does. Nice. This is, I, no, this is a 2B, but I don't know if it'll be dark enough. We'll see. <clears throat> what is that? Interesting. It's getting really hot in here. Right? It's definitely toastier. Um, do you get frustrated when a single line is not in the correct place, even though no, the rest of the drawing looks perfect? No, a single line, what, come on. <laughs> so that happens to me a lot. Uh, I get so frustrated. <laughs> Rip on my hair. Do the uh, 
do the Bob Ross method and just work around it. I don't usually get that frustrated while drawing. Like, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm drawing. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I get more frustrated during a live stream because I, I, I'm, I have like higher expectations. I'm going way faster and I'm messing up more. Mm. <laughs> uh, but when I'm just drawing for myself, it's just like, it's meditation. I'm having fun. I'm not, I'm not usually frustrated. If there's a challenge, if I'm dealing with a problem, it's actually kind of fun. Oh man, that is dangerous. I'm shaking my match. Right <laughs> um, a wild Tom appeared said that general charcoal pencils are the the big brand. That's the one I was thinking of. The big one that I couldn't think of the name. Yeah. I don't use them that much. That's why I couldn't think of the name. Thank it's you, like Tom. my fourth. So Conte is my pr uh, my main one. Then I would say. <clears throat> Probably pr Primo or Ritmo, then Wolf Carbon, then Generals. So I guess that's five, right? <laughs> but some people use Generals as their main one. So this is not like an order of best to worst. This is my, your this is how much I use them um, for the, the specific looks I like to get. Um, okay. God, why did I do that? That's so stupid. I'm not, I don't need a mechanical pencil for the darks. Okay, guys, you're, you're watching me learn. <laughs> so, ask another question. Okay, um, let's see. And I promise I, it's gonna start getting real good soon. How does one learn to start, learn to draw stylized portraits? I have no problem drawing realistic, but stylization's much harder for me. Um. I would say start um, studying some artists that stylize and try to do master studies of their stuff. Stylizing, you could stylize values, you can stylize shape and proportion, um, you can stylize any anything, right? It's like, what do you mean? How do you want to stylize your stuff? And then start finding artists that are doing that really well and just study from them. Um, yeah, it could be like the draftsman episode where it's finding your art parents and finding your kind of decide parents, yeah. who I your think parents are and then base your master studies off those people. Yeah, so yeah, listen to the art parents episode. We also did a master studies episode. Hmm. Also, I think that was also last last season, season last two. Season. All right, I'm actually kind of dulling it down a little <laughs> bit because I don't want really yeah, thin that. strokes in the background. So. Um, let's see. Some stuff I do want to keep really vague and, and loose. Again, showing this thing. Um, I mean, look at the ear. Super loose. Like, I don't have the back of the head defined. Whereas, you know, in the photo I took of this guy, I could clearly see the back of the head. Look at the top of the head. Where, where'd it go? <laughs> it's just some loose strokes. But the detail's right there, right? And so, I don't want to start rendering this area. But I do want to start adding some dark value in here because I want these lights to pop. And so I'm going to start here where I know I want to make sure, I'm going to have detail in here because it's still right on, along the face. So just, at this point, this stroke I'm putting in is just to establish the full value range. Now you can see how much room I have <laughs> to render out that ear if I wanted to, right? Look how light that is now. Um, Tawanda's asking, do you use sponges? And how do sponges, sponges. and brushes perform? No, I, haven't, I have not used sponges. Uh, what was that little triangle thing you used on oh, the Yoni demo, was that shading? a sponge? It, yeah. it is, it's kind of, I guess it's, it's a smudging sponge. I was imagining like a sponge. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did, uh, Cesar Santos introduced me to it. And I did use it a lot for that, the, 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 fig, the nude figure I showed. Yeah. Uh, 
when you take a break while you're drawing, do you do other drawings? Do you do like exercise or sketches when you're breaking? <laughs> no, I take a break. Day? I take a break. Okay. I, I like something where my mind is doing something else where it could be like, okay, I got to answer some emails. Or I gotta go eat, <laughs> right? Usually that's the big one. <laughs> right, I gotta take a break, and I'm really hungry right now. Um, like my body has needs. It, it could be anything that's different. You you gotta rest a little bit. Usually I'll, like ideally I'll go for three hours, like really really uh, intense. I'll take a break for like an hour or two, and a break doesn't mean I'm just like watching TV. It could be just like I'm working on more like office stuff, I'm whatever. And then I'll do another three intense hours. And so it's like a six hour drawing day for me is ideal. Anything beyond that, I'm probably just like not making the best decisions anymore. Um, obviously sometimes I, you know, you just gotta go longer because either you really wanna finish something or you might have deadlines. Um, MDE War is asking, is traditional medium the best for learning? And what are your thoughts on digital procreate charcoal brushes? I don't Best for learning what? <laughs> Maybe if you're just starting out, they want to learn. For learning fundamentals? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's the best. Um, I, I recommend definitely um, including traditional media in your studies. But I wouldn't say like, yeah, avoid digital uh, because so and so. Like, it, it's it's just a tool. It's a it's just a medium, um, and you can still practice gesture digitally. You can still practice practice values, perspective digitally. It's 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 just a medium. Um, so yeah. Any questions about like my current stage? Probably have to look at the recent ones. I've been yeah, I've been I'm refreshing the recent things, um, just so I can tell people what's up, what's going on here. Um, Asari's asking. I have problems drawing shoulders. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can achieve nice lines when drawing with your technique, but I always end up having uh, to hold the pencil far away from the graphite. Should I always have fingers near the graphite or not? Uh, no, okay. this is usually bad. Wait, wait. Oh, and you're this, really. This is usually bad. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna probably press too hard. You're gonna squeeze your pencil more. Um, you see, my, my, my pencil, my hand was here, right in the middle, <clears throat> with the back touching the top. My kind of resting there. Um, some people really like to go like as far as they can, and when the pencil gets too short, it just gets really uncomfortable because. You know, naturally, it's like if it's too short, it's like not even resting on your pencil anymore, or on your hand anymore. So this is this is ideal. You want to make sure you can you can have big, wide strokes. See, look at the range I can get with with my fingers. On I'm doing a drawing like this small right now, right? I'm not using my shoulder. <laughs> I'm also I'm also rendering. I'm using the tip. I'm not doing this with graphite, um, so I hold it here. So I was asking, have we ever, uh, have you ever done a drawing with makeup brushes? makeup brushes? I have used makeup brushes, like little the little round pads. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I've tried it one experiment thing with this technique, and it, it actually works pretty good. So yeah, uh, Q-tips. Cotton mm. balls, all sorts of stuff, you guys. Just experiment. Um, stuff works pretty good. Uh, when you're studying from masters, should you use the same medium 
that the master used or can you use a different medium? It depends on what you're studying from the master. If you're trying to replicate the painting or the drawing, you should probably try to do that. But if you're just like doing a color study from that master, if you just want to study how they did color, then no, not really. You don't have to get their technique down. You're just studying their color harmonies and, and that sort of thing. If you're just trying to study their composition, you can do it digitally. You just study their value dis distribution, the you know, how, the storytelling, all that stuff. It, um, you don't need to recreate the painting or the drawing. So it depends. If you're trying to, like, if you're doing a fashion study, <laughs> um, and you want to get a similar like uh, surface effect where all that texture gets. Well, you're probably going to have to try to use similar tools that he was using to get a similar surface effect. But you could also try to replicate that digitally, right? Like, nothing's stopping you from, from trying to do that. Um, or nothing should stop you from yeah. trying. Um, a wild time up here is... Uh, we were talking about how we get a lot of shine on with graphite. And he said, have you tried using Mar uh, Stedler's Mars Lumograph pencils? They're like graphite, but don't shine as much. It might be. Um, Stedler Mars Lumograph. Are they the ones, are they like the woodless ones? I'll take a look. Yeah. Because if they are the, the woodless, well, no, they do get a shine. The ones I'm thinking of, they still get a shine, so it's probably not that one, but... Uh, Looks like they're just the the blue, <laughs> the blue. Uh... Oh, isn't that? Oh, oh, I actually don't have that one. Here. But yes, I have those, and those are wonderful graphite pencils. But um, they still get a shine. Yeah, he said they yeah. don't shine as much. As much? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. I, I'm, I've those were my primary wooded pencils until I I started using the uh, the, the black wings. Um, I, I really like these as well. But the shine doesn't really bother me that much. So. Uh, Miroslav's asking, uh, does the weight of the paper have significance in portrait drawing? No, uh, not not really. <laughs> like usually the paper weights for like sturdiness, right? Yeah, like, it's just like, gonna make it thicker. But when I'm drawing at it, I actually, if this was half the thickness, I, I don't think I'd be able to tell. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, people do amazing things in those. Uh, what are those sketchbooks called? Uh, Moleskins. The Moleskins. Yeah, those Moleskine. are Moleskine. Yeah, I remember. I, there was a giant. I remember there was a giant fight online. Like, is it Moleskine or Moleskine? What? Yeah. Wait, so, wait, wait, wait. It was like someone the from the company did a video where they said like, "Oh, these are the Moleskines," and everyone was like, "Huh? Like what?" Has anyone else from the company ever done a video where they say I, Moleskin? I, don't know. Yeah, I remember it was a, it was a meme for like four months, and then uh, no one's heard it. We we may have like restarted the the battle. It's probably like the GIF GIF thing. Yeah. Ah, snaps! Uh -oh. Did I just do that? You've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Where's my brush? Let's we'll see if I can fix it. Oh, did I just fix it? Oh, snap! <laughs> I think I did. Um. Yeah. So I'm just. I'm gonna kind of focus in on this eye and try to make it look good because it's the focal point. And how long are we? Uh, we are 20 minutes over. We're at over what? Well, we're at two. It's two twenty one. Oh, okay. No, I was planning for three. There's oh, okay. no way I was gonna do this in two hours. Okay. Yeah. Um. Get that highlight in. Yeah, so we'll, I'll go for another 40 minutes and then I will end it and 
give away the Vision X Live Pro Passes. Are we just going to post a link and then people can go to the link? Or? I'm going to say it because oh. it's only 50 passes and the first 50 people. Yeah, and if you post a link, often robots go in and uh, I know that's a problem on Reddit. Yeah, but right? I feel like they're going to go. It's it's a free pass to yeah. a convention, which costs like a few hundred bucks, I think. Um, 50 people are going to go in there immediately. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be gone in a few minutes. So I don't think it's it a would. digital. Yeah, it's a digital convention, convention this year. So it's not like you got to fly anywhere. Yeah, so, yeah, that's at the end of this, so stick around. Yeah. Uh, Teresa was asking, what was the mechanical pencil sharpener? I know we've got a video. Um, yeah, it's, that. this is the Stedler. It comes with, or it's, it's yeah, part of the same, one? it's made by the same company. They sell this, and it's specifically made to be used with this pencil. Like, even these holes here are made to measure the length so you can like you could take the you know the, the the lead comes out you kind of boop put it in measure the length and then you got the perfect length to put it into this thing so that the the razor blade doesn't just like um Sheer break enough. your thing in half yeah uh so yeah oh jesus <laughs> but we have a video it's like supplies i use in my videos and oh, yeah, that right. we have a demo of, i mean a demo of you sharpening forgot to zoom in oh so much better okay i just zoomed in on my ipad into the eye <laughs> i've been drawing from this tiny eye um gfc is asking was there a book that helped you most on learning values and rendering no i i didn't learn values and rendering from a book i learned it from watts atelier in class um yeah sorry that that's <laughs> I went yeah, to school that taught it, so I didn't. I didn't need to learn it from a book. Um, that was like the primary thing they were teaching at Watts. So. <laughs> Not values in rendering, but I mean rendering was a humongous thing, and values are a big part of rendering. So, A Wild Tom appeared said he, they meant the black Stedler Mars Lumagraph pencils and sent a link to these. Oh, snap. I've never tried those. I'll get some. Yeah, so. What does it say in the Mars Lumagraph, Lumagraph Black. Oh, it's not in English, so we can't even read that. Der Bleistift ist. Yeah. About this item, high quality art pencil. Nice. That's what, this, what it says. That's what it says. Unbelievably break resistant. Oh wow! <laughs> I actually don't have that issue with graphite. So I remember we ordered some pencils at some point, and there were rocks in the, there was like hard parts in it, and they would uh -huh. chip and break all the time. But okay, nice. Well, we'll we'll probably buy these and check them out. Yeah. Oh god, that looks really bad. That eye shape is horrible. That looks like Ugh. It's I mean it's probably just cuz everything around is unfinished, but There's the frustration, you guys. What do you do? You, just you power it through. You suck it up and you fix it. Also getting really hot in here. We should just buy like giant ice blocks to surround us when we do a live stream. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's like you can see Stan electrocuted live on live stream. As the, as the blocks melt and pool around the uh, the electrical cables on the floor. Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, MDE War is asking, how do you start deciding on the next area to render or focus on? 
I jump around. I mean, you could see I started here, I went down here, and then I kind of <laughs> stopped. I didn't go all the way. Then I jumped into the eye. We'll see where I jump next. It's kind of just a decision my brain makes on its own. No process other than I'm jumping around. Um, but not everybody jumps around. Some people just start with the eye and then just go bloop. <laughs> so perfectly normal or perfectly okay to do either of those. It's like whatever works for you. Yeah. Um, Zaunji is asking, Hi Stan, I asked Dorian this, but would be interested in your take. To reduce shine and burnishing. Would I you, don't know what burnishing is. I'm not, I'm also not sure what burnishing is. Um, but would you say try to arrive at the correct value early using correct pencil hardness early with fewer layers? I'm assuming it's like yeah, drawing yeah, yeah. over and over again. Or, or keep going? That was, that was the oh. end of the question. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, so I know Stephen Bauman likes to layer a lot. Um, and he gets less shine because he layers a lot. Um, I, I don't layer nearly as much. And so my, my shine is probably a little bit higher than his. But like I said, it doesn't bother me as much. It's not like my, my whole purpose of everything I'm doing here just to reduce the shine of the graphite. Um, I'm more focused on just getting the right value down if i can get it through one layer i'll probably do it <laughs> and it'll just be more shiny so uh, like i'm probably just not the right guy to ask about this because i don't care um because like i'll put i put my uh my graphite drawings in glass see this is there's a piece of glass see how shiny it is yeah. so it's like look at when i put it at an angle where it the graphite starts to get shiny it also reflects the light mm. on the glass so it's like if you look at it from the optimal angle for the glass to not have a shine it also the graphite also doesn't have a shine from that angle so it's like it doesn't matter to me it just yeah, because you're always going to get worse shine from the glass. Yeah, the, yeah, the glass is way worse. So, that's my take on it. Uh, here's a question from a few more minutes ago. Uh, they're saying, will this be the uh, likely be the darkest dark in the drawing? I'm assuming either the this the hair. Yeah, that's my, the darkest dark. In that's the, the darkest dark. And then, how hard are you pressing when you uh, go that dark? Seventeen. Seventeen. Out of so, something, I'm not gonna tell you the the range. That's for you to decide. Yeah, um, it's not hard enough to indent the page. If you're indenting, if you're pushing the page in, that's too hard. I am not pushing that hard. I'm pushing less than that. Oh, uh, Fred responded, burnishing is the breaking down of the paper tooth by repeated rubbing with tools. Oh, right. So that's what I was just saying with pushing too hard here. Mm. Yeah, I'm never pushing too hard. I mean, usually with, with like these areas in here. Yeah, I'll just go to the right pencil. Like this is a much softer pencil than what I have here. And when I go into half, these lighter half tones, this is too soft. It's just going to go dark right away. And so I'm I'm kind of switching between these two at the moment. Um. Right now what's going through my head is I don't like how perfectly soft I'm making everything. I mm -hmm. want more pencil strokes in here. So I'm gonna loosen up a little bit and just allow myself to put texture in. And that's probably why I'm not moving so fast through this is that I'm like trying to keep it so soft and perfect. Let's 
power through this thing. Yeah. We're gonna get an airdrop of uh, art supplies coming soon. We? No, just the plane overhead. Oh, the plane. <laughs> We're right by an airport, so we always, or a military base, so. Or both. Yeah. We are in the path of, from San Diego airport, we go right through here, okay? Yeah. And we're right by a military base. <laughs> so we hear all sorts of airplanes. Yeah. We'll have to stop recording every once in a while and be like, all right, let this uh, attack helicopter fly overhead for a sec. <laughs> yeah. When they do tests, it's a little annoying. Yeah. But important job. I feel like we kind of answered this question a little earlier, but uh, Alex is asking, what's your position on likeness in portraits? Should it be as accurate as possible, or do you allow yourself to make, make them look better than the reference, like correcting skin flaws or improving proportions, etc.? It depends on what your goal is. Um, if you're doing a commission, you probably want to improve some flaws and also just try to get them as accurate as possible as far as uh, like likeness and proportion like but but yeah skin flaws you could obviously eliminate like um but if you're drawing like a ruggedy old man like this <laughs> the, the one i keep showing you guys i'm not gonna improve skin flaws <laughs> like i'm that's, gonna exaggerate that's them. what you want i'm gonna exaggerate the skin flaws um but i've stopped doing commissioned portraits because i don't want to care too much about making someone look more attractive. I want to make someone look more interesting, right? That That's when I draw, that's what I like. And so that's what I'm going for. If like I see a shape and I want to design it a little bit, but it's going to make it look less like the person, I don't care. Um, and so to me, it's more important to just make it look cool. But it depends. Um, so I was asking, how do you normally warm up for a drawing? Damn it. Uh-oh. <clears throat> the eye's not looking in the right spot. It's all right. It'll just be off. <laughs> how do I warm up? Yeah. Um, I'm assuming for to... a longer drawing, but... Yeah, I, I used to warm up a lot more than I do now. Um... I used to do page, just like a page or two of like circles, just to shade it. Um, I don't, I don't really warm up anymore. Just kind of jump in and warm up during the drawing. I'm really hating the eyes right now. It's just <laughs> it's, it's probably just because there's so much incomplete wrong values around it mm. just makes the eyes look like like a little cut out shapes time to power through to the rest of the face. yeah power through it's gonna we'll need to make a, a shirt it just says power, power through. through yeah um tawanda's asking uh do you mix charcoal powder with graphite powder Mm, I've never done that. Why? That's just a question. <laughs> yeah, but my question is why? What's are you? Are you just experimenting? If if you are, then go ahead and try it. See what happens, and uh, maybe you'll like it. I have never done that. I don't see a purpose. It is so hot in here. <laughs> oh my God. Doesn't help that you're here. <laughs> Can you 
Can you leave? Just, can you? I just radiate heat. <laughs> You're so hot, Sean. <laughs> What can I say, man? It's a curse. It's a curse. Um, yeah, if you're on YouTube and you want to ask questions, go to proco.com slash 543. Are we out of questions? We're, we're, I'll, I'm starting to scroll down because I had to... We, we had some, you're uh, starting to scroll down? I've been scrolling. <laughs> normally, I just re- refresh the latest, and I'm, I'm like, I'm oh, scrolling down a little bit. But um, Well, you can read some of the older ones. I'm... There's quite a few. I'm I'm going down looking for There's the ones. There's quite that, a few. Yeah. Uh, well, well, that's fine. We got a lot. Do you have uh, what's your most memorable portrait commission experience, either good or bad? Ah, oh, jeez, I don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to say. It's one person. It's I, I, I'm, I'm mostly it's the good ones are mostly like oh it was all right. <laughs> it's not like any specific commissions were like horrible. Like, I don't think I've ever had a commissioned portrait where, like, the client was, hor- like, really bad. Um, where it was, like, a nightmare to work with. They're all very pleasant. It's just, it's more of me. I'm the problem. I, I don't like doing that. Um, so, yeah. I've never, I've never really gotten a nightmare client. Um, LF Theory is asking, uh, by the time I work out the perspective and gestures, I just lose the original vision of my drawing and mm. say, just let the stream carry myself, which ends up leading me sometimes far away from my original vision. So it's like, what do you do if you struggle carrying the original idea through the rendering? You, you got to reevaluate at every stage. Um, if you're always losing your original vision at some point, keep practicing that part of it and try to carry it through. I don't, I don't know. Um, you've already identified the problem, which is the most difficult thing. And now catch yourself and just keep attempting to not do that. Um, I think without really specifically looking at a specific thing that you just did, I can't really help you other than say what I just said. Um. Yeah, she was also curious. This will be more for me, but uh, why we're not for Carla's, uh, uh, what is it, the, the contest, the poster contest, uh, why were not all the contra- uh, entries reviewed? Uh, she did actually look at everyone's stuff, yeah. but it's like a three and a half to four hour yeah. thing, and so we gotta we gotta edit it down. And so usually, if there's not like a specific reaction, this this we do this with every every um, Proco challenge where we record a significant amount and then we cut it down to a more fun video, trying to keep the winners in there you know and stuff like that yeah a it's lot just, of the reactions so are just like okay you yeah, know they're like, not oh, that cool. interesting you're not gonna watch the fun stuff the good reactions if the video is four hours long yeah so everybody was judged everyone was considered in the judging process of choosing the winners it's just that there were like uh, was it like 300 there were hundreds yeah yeah so you gotta, you guys gotta remember, we're. It is also a YouTube channel. We're trying to trying to make a good video, good as video well. for people to actually watch. Yeah. Um, and also, like, if there's the same problem coming up on a drawing over and over and over again, where it's the same issue, if someone repeats that critique multiple times, we usually will start removing um, repeated critiques as well. Yeah. Um, David's asking, how did you notice his eyes were off? I didn't notice that in, that difference. The, this eye, wait, which one, when, when at the, like just now? Uh, this this is, eye was too, too close. He's like yeah. getting cross-eyed. Mm. He's still a little too cross-eyed. I, mm. I haven't fixed it all the way. The eyes are a little messed up, but I'm, I'm just trying to power through this. Um, I might go back and, and fix it, but yeah. Eyes, to me, eyes are the most challenging part 
um, in a drawing, in a, in a portrait drawing to get right. I always just, I need to spend time on it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's my thing. But it's like, you know, if some, if I go to someone and I ask them like, how do I get the eyes right? <laughs> you see how like that's like a very generic question. It's like I don't know. You just gotta spend more time on it. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do to fix my eyes. I would have I'd spend more time on it. Um, keep fixing it until I'm happy with it. Keep developing my eyes and to the point where I could see all the mistakes. Woo. I know there's some things about this that I know are going to make it look so much better, which is a lot of the cool stuff around. Um, but it's like I can't get to it until I do some of this stuff. Okay, getting into that core shadow. This kind of softens out in this area. But this part is going so much faster because I have this base of charcoal powder already there. If I had white paper in this area right now, I'd, I'd be spending an hour trying to get the, these perfect gradations in here. And also the white would just be a, such a huge distraction in here that I wouldn't actually even be able to, to judge my final values until I cover the whole thing several times with, with a bunch of general tone using the tip. Which actually is a big mistake I see a lot in graphite drawings, is shadows are just not dark enough. Um, because people try to go for the final relationships in there without just first getting it up to that level that that uh that value of darkness that it needs until you really start judging the subtle relationships. Uh, Laurel's asking, do you ever revert back to charcoal after going to graphite? No, the charcoal powder doesn't stick onto the graphite. The graphite is a metal. It's a metal, right? It's a metal. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's slick. It, does, it won't some... stick to it. It needs something to like to bite or or glue. I don't. Know. Yeah. <laughs> You need something. MD Ewar is asking, uh, before you draw, before one can draw a face with good proportions, is there any advantage to pushing the render stage or should you not even bother? Um, yeah, you should bother, you should try. Your proportions might be off while you're rendering, but that's okay, you're practicing rendering. Um, yeah, you should bother. I was practicing rendering way before I was ready to do a lot of things. Uh, and that's okay, because I was practicing a lot of things at the same time. Mm. Yeah, totally fine. Go ahead, have fun. Have fun with your rendering. Um, oh, LF Theory is asking, is it possible for digital Photoshop brushes to make a realistic uh, appear just like the traditional ones. Oh, and that's, yes. yes. I know that we got the Lane Brown brushes. Like, yep. that's almost indistinct. I mean, is it indistinguishable S from... Sometimes you can tell, but, like, when good. he does... Like, there's some of his drawings that I look at on his Instagram. They pop up all the time in my feed, and I'm like, what the hell? He did it again! <laughs> just looks like... <laughs> yeah. Looks so real. Um, so, yes, it is possible. And, it, you know, it's only going to get better. Like, looking back five years ago, the best I saw was like, oh, that's kind of looking like a little like traditional. Yeah, it was like Kyle's <laughs> yeah. brushes. Right, yeah, Kyle's yeah. were getting close. And, and now it's just like, Jesus Christ, that looks 
just like traditional, but like better. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's only well, gonna get better from here. And it's just crazy to think about where things will will end up. Um, once robots are yeah. <laughs> making brushes for us, AI made brushes. Matthew's no, asking. I don't, I, don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think that's gonna make him any better. <laughs> but we'll see. Matthew's asking, any chance of doing a poker challenge for artists who suck like me? We just did one. <laughs> <laughs> no, just They're all for people. It, it's for everyone. Yeah. Every level. Yeah, you, you don't know? have to be. I mean, I guess it depends on what the criteria, the judging criteria is. But a lot of times it's like the one that's not necessarily the most uh, technically skilled. Sometimes it, just the idea is so good. Yeah. Yeah, not every prize we give out is is for technical execution. Like the WTF award, the comedy award. Like we get, yeah. like if you do one that's like, yeah, it's, it's okay rendering and stuff, but it's like freaking hilarious. So we're going to yeah. give you a prize. <laughs> um, we also have a random winner award where literally anyone yeah, but, can win. Uh, your head is starting to get into the image. Ah, oopsies. <laughs> um but yeah, no, the, you guys, the, the purpose of these challenges is not to win. Um, it's to participate. It's, it's like Carla gave you a job, right? As if it's a real job. And now you have to design this movie poster as if it's a commission. And you get to practice doing that. And while you're doing that, there's 300 other people doing the same thing as you and you can watch them and you can learn from what someone else did and it's just a much more fun way of doing a project that is kind of like reality yeah um yeah i, I could feel it <laughs> but I, I need to get in there I need to... <laughs> uh. um of theory is asking can we reveal the theme of the next challenge um do you ooh. have it's coming on on monday yeah have, I will we, announce, have we announced who is going to be No, we haven't, uh, but I will I'll, I won't announce the theme. I won't, I won't announce the prompt. But it is <laughs> <laughs> it's, very, it's very weird. <laughs> well, the prompt is weird. Yeah. Uh the judge is Ethan Becker. Yeah. So. so. Ta-da! Enjoy guys. <laughs> Enjoy this one. Next one. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm very excited to see yeah. People's. I really want to know how how far he gets in the character with the reaction video. <laughs> I hope he goes far, man. Yeah. I'm just worried about the people who don't understand him, uh, where they they think he's gonna like give him critique and they're <laughs> like, whoa, I'm never gonna draw again. Uh, we'll have to make sure people are prepared. This is gonna be a fun one, though. It's gonna be really fun. <laughs> um, YZ is asking is there a particular reason why Stan went back to using the Stedler instead of the Blackwing um, is the Blackwing led to soft? it was too soft it was going too dark right away um, and I'm yeah I'm just trying to be a little more subtle yeah and do you have any, uh, Merrick's asking, do you have any rules you follow regarding the usage of graphite and charcoal when mixing them together? It seems like we did kind of answer it when it was like, use the graphite on top of charcoal and not yeah. the other way around. But Pretty anything much. else beyond that? Or, um, or is that kind of the main, the main thing? Something we haven't already covered? I don't think so. Okay. So no. that's the one rule. I mean, I guess you could... You could break that rule. I mean, you could break it, that but it'll, rule, but you just got to make sure you understand how to break rules, those specific rules. You you wouldn't break that rule if you're just starting out. Like, just try to do it the way I did it and experiment. And yeah. Go for the sure path. Um, and it's then a, as you're comfortable with these, start experimenting. Start pushing the boundaries and mess up. Fail. Because the failure will get you to understand things better. Yeah. It's like drawing is already hard. You don't want to take the like avant-garde right. new path that's even harder yeah 
It's like, just because. Yeah, get into the kitty, you know, get in the shallow end of the pool first yeah. instead of cannonballing into the deep end. <laughs> yeah. I think one thing I don't like about this eye is it's like super sharp. Mm. I'm just going to knock it back. It's like a background element. Um, still don't like it. <laughs> Um, Renee is asking, I work in the animation industry and have played around with the idea of becoming a portrait pet painter. I enjoy it a lot and would like for that to take a more serious part of my career. Any advice? This kind of plunge worries me. I know you haven't done portrait painting in a while. Um, I know court. You mean pet, like animal? But portrait? just port, like portrait for oh, commission. Commissioned portraits, like yeah. Um, I know court has yeah. gotten a lot of commissions for like even just pet painting and like you might want to ask him because he is whenever yeah. i talk to him he is flying all over the country uh going to conventions he's like i don't know he, he's doing a lot of stuff non-stop yeah he's popular man. he's very popular yeah so. as far as art you know yeah, not actually, just as a teacher but like just he's a working artist um yeah court jones Send him a message. He's on here. Yep. He has a course. You can ask, tag him. Ask him uh, in this stream and tag him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, at Court Jones. You can tag people on Proto. You can also tag products. So if you're like referring to a lesson, you start typing the title of the lesson or the course, and you can select and it'll tag that mm. thing as well. I think most people don't know that. But you can tag things. Um, Leon's asking if Ahmed Aldori has been a host for the Proko Challenge. Yes, yeah, he, has. he and Steven Sabata. They did like kind of a combo. Um, I think it was the space aliens, like draw an abduction scene or something, or aliens. Uh, that was a fun video. So you can check that out on YouTube. Yes. It was pretty recent, too. It was in yeah, the last it was like three recent. months. Was I'm pretty sure. Oh, I mean, these last two months, the everything uh, seems the launch long feels long. like it's been like six months. But yeah, everything feels like it was five years ago. <laughs> and everything feels like it was yesterday yeah. at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there. I have no idea what time. What time anymore. exists? We are on the black hole planet in <laughs> Inception. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> This stream is actually 10 years long. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years long. <laughs> nice. Is it okay? I don't I can't even tell anymore. Something I like off. it. I like it. He's got like the thoughtful, I mean I am a, a generally positive person. But yeah, I enjoy you it. like everything. <laughs> and you oh, hate yeah. everything at the same <laughs> oh, time. <yeah. laughs> Um, Tim Collins is asking, how do you decide where to put lost edges? Um, the ones that, the areas that I want to knock back usually is where I'm going to lose the edges and the ones that I want to pop forward, I'm going to create edges. Like in the photo, this edge of the nose to the cheek is very, very subtle, but I actually brought it out more. I actually created a stronger contrasty edge. Um, just because I wanted that nose to pop out a little more. Uh, I, I wish I had a, a better stroke in there for it, but it's a little messy. Um, there, actually, that looks better. But yeah, typically I want more atmosphere as things go back into the background. Um, I was thinking I might I might lose this edge in here, but it didn't happen. Let's see if let's let's lose it. <laughs> But I do like the shape of the cheekbone. But let's maybe just soften it. So take the background and just like. Create a little more atmosphere back here. And so now it, it pushes the chin forward more. 
the nose will be forward. I'll have to adjust this a little bit. Nose will be forward more. I probably want to knock this back a little bit as well. It's too sudden. So it'll be a little more subtle in the back. So now you see how way more atmosphere in the, in the edges that I, I lose and no atmosphere here. It's like I could see it clearly. So it, it's, it's a compositional, it's a storytelling decision. Um, yeah, I know I've watched uh, some of like Chris Legaspi's videos on how he does portrait and he'll, the first thing he does is just make like five to 10 thumbnails yeah. and he tests yeah. each, each edge. Like, how does this look? If I lose this edge, how does this look? And they're pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. If I'm doing a longer drawing, typically I will do value studies beforehand. Like I would have done a value study of this, but I didn't, you know, because I don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's let's jump back here into the hair. This is a fun part, huh? Okay. So let's. Get this part first, so it's kind of a gradation from kind of dark to really dark. Uh, Diana Mata is asking, if you were drawing the guy in the photograph but live, uh, as he is in the picture, would you be doing anything differently or doing a different strategy? Um. I don't think so, no. Uh, my my process from drawing photos is based on my process from drawing live. Because when I was a, a full-time student, I mostly drew from life. Um, and so then when I went, whenever I went home to draw from photos, it was like, it was the exact same process. I didn't really know <laughs> what else to do. It was like, that was it. Um, so, no, not really. Ponch is asking, if we were to simplify the uh, drawing portraits into a few simple steps, what would those <laughs> what? steps be? What? Um, I feel like it'd be like Draw a circle. Draw I feel like we, the rest of we, the portrait. We, there, there is like right? a, oh yeah, do the owl. Yeah. Um, I, but I feel like whenever we make videos, we do kind of like our title cards. We usually like do the land. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, find the, the shadow patterns. Or the shadow shapes, you know. Yep. Shade. <laughs> yeah, I mean, lay in first. That's that's always like the the one main step. Um, yeah, I mean, if you even just go to like, if you even just go to like the figure demos or anatomy, I think the figure demos and portrait demos, you can like look at the title cards of each section, and we kind of like have to think of like what are these different steps that are happening yeah okay so i know the the uh core shadow is right along here so let's let's just kind of Create an interesting core shadow that's made out of kind of these strokes that kind of look like strands of hair. Um, Merrick is asking, I always have trouble with capturing values accurately. I try squinting and it helps a little bit. Uh, desaturating reference to black and white seems to help as well, but I can't do that with live references or squint for two hours straight. Uh, what are the other, what are other ways to learn to comprehend and put values on paper so they look right? What? Sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> didn't hear that one. Uh, the full thing. Uh, so he said, he's asking, I always have trouble capturing values accurately. I try squinting and that helps a bit or desaturating 
uh, photos to black and white, but I can't uh, desaturate live references or squint for two hours straight. Uh, what are other ways to learn to comprehend and put values on paper so they look right? Well, squinting is more for getting the general effect. <clears throat> You're not going to squint to get the values of like the, like these little halftone values on the eye. I'm opening up my eyes and I'm really looking at it and analyzing everything around there. I'm not squinting at that. When I kind of step back, I squint and I, I kind of squint at the photo, look at the big, sh the big shape of the shadow, and look at my drawing and make sure the big shapes are similar. So you're not spending the whole time in your drawing trying to get the big shapes, right? Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of time spent on getting details as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't see why you'd have to squint the whole time. The I think the problem is maybe you just have a hard time judging values. The only way to get better at that is just continue judging values. Just practice getting... Practice looking at values and putting them down. No, so, that's... It's like, how do you get better at hitting a ball? with a bat. You just keep swinging at it. Yeah, I'm starting to press a little bit too hard. I'm feeling it. So I'm like, Ugh, I can't go too dark, but I'm in a rush. <laughs> I don't have much time. Um, let's get this big boy out. Let's see what. And see, now I'm using the side of my pencil, so I'm going overhand. Laurel's asking, do you feel a ton of pressure while drawing on camera, or are you just used to it by now? Of course I feel pressure, yeah. Absolutely, a ton. Non-stop. Non-stop. Try it. Try it, see how it feels. <laughs> I feel like drawing on live stream is probably different than drawing oh, on, on a camera. On yeah, because not, you can edit. You know, we yeah. can be like, well, well, that sucks. Well, then we don't have to show it. <laughs> yeah, not nearly as much pressure when I'm just recording tutorials. Yeah. Um, I, I just trash things all the time. Yeah. You know, like, eh, that wasn't good enough. Do yeah, it again. So if you're recording yourself drawing and it's bad, you don't have to show anyone. Yeah. <laughs> so. Also, when you're just drawing something, you don't have to show anyone. Yeah. Like having your like throwaway sketchbook if you're too stressed out to draw on the good sketchbook. Uh, yeah, I totally lost it here. Where was it? So he's got. It's definitely missing a jaw. I feel like that was a big element that I was missing. Because he feels like he's got this, you know, very chiseled, st strong, masculine jaw, and right now it's just like this pointy chin and softness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and this is an area where I would probably spend time really getting these gradations correct, but. Um, Rushing through it. Yeah, it it is three o'clock. It's now. three o'clock. Yeah, but it. I mean, we can go yeah. beyond. I'll go a little bit longer. Um, I could announce the the winner. Oh, Here, the, let me see. The, the, I gotta get by the. Uh, yeah, I got. There's some info. Yeah, so Vision X here. I'll just, so Vision X is a online convention. It's going to be July 16th through the 18th. So it's like it's not three days. Um, I'm going to be one of the artists that's demonstrating there. 
Um, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have several panels there. Um, but yeah, go to their website, check it out. They have, I think, like 90 plus artists on there already that are gonna be demonstrating. So they're gonna, they're giving away 50 passes to to the first 50 people that do this. Okay, okay, you're ready. Get your keyboards ready. <laughs> okay. So you go to visionxlive.com and you get the, the, the pro pass. You add that to your cart and you use the code CPROCO. So S E E P R O K O. Um, and then you check out with that discount code and it should work. Have we even tested this? <laughs> I hope this <laughs> works, so. guys. I don't think we've tested it, but um, I trust them. Uh, and you should get it for free and it's only 50 people. It's, it, so, so go do it. C Proko S E E P R O K O. Any uh, did they mention caps? I don't think caps usually matter. They it is caps on my in this note here. So, so all caps. Given caps. Um, but anyway, yeah, they 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 also sponsor the challenge, the Proko challenge. Yeah. Um, so very thankful for Vision X. Yeah, we know They're, several other artists that are also going to be my big doing boy. stuff there. Uh, do you want to go back to... Bam. Bam. So good luck. Yeah. Getting... Hey, the force. <laughs> yeah. I'll be with you. Yeah, there's, there's more than 500 people watching right now, so... You can yeah. Be in the 10%. Oh. Dylan says it worked. <laughs> nice congratulations so, uh, nice dylan. Job, dylan dylan you did it <laughs> so that means it was available still yeah. when dylan did it so that means there's only 49 left at least <laughs> like, at most yeah there's there's at most 49 Um, Merrick's asking, um, can you use masking liquid for drawing to protect the lightest highlights? Uh, probably. I don't see why not. I've seen people use it a lot for like watercolor, but yeah. I, I haven't really yeah, seen it much on. I would. I don't. I don't see why you would. You could. I mean, you can erase this stuff out. You know, like yeah. if I really wanted to get out something, like I. I have to move the eye a little bit, and now the highlight is where the pupil was, right? <laughs> it's like no, I have to go from black to white. Like I can get, I can, I can get it out with this thing. I just need to cut a little corner, make it perfectly clean, and just go in there, rub it out. Even get, um, I have one of those electric erasers that just like spins, um, but I'm not gonna go get it. You just, you can look up what an electric eraser is. Um, and yeah, you can get it back. I wouldn't waste my time on, on that. Also, it's like you, you're pretty much stuck with that being exactly where those lights are, those pure, pure white lights. So when, at what stage are you gonna put those there, right? Um, you really have to be able to plan it out perfectly. Yeah. Uh, Jason's asking, do you use different paper types when drawing quick sketches versus commissioned works? I don't do commissioned works anymore. <laughs> <laughs> when you did, when I, I did? assume the commission no. stuff. You, well, you quick like, sketch. You use like newsprint for. No, I didn't. I never used newsprint oh, really? for oh. commissioned. No, no, I mean for quick sketch. Yeah. For for quick sketch, yes, I use newsprint. Um, and that stuff deteriorates. Yeah, instantly. I would never do a commission on newsprint. That. Yeah. Unless it's a live piece that's meant to degrade. Yeah. Yeah, go full Banksy and just have it like light itself on fire after a week. Oh, Sean. <laughs> hey, man, I can keep these coming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is the real Morgan Weisling or not. Oh, it probably but is. He says, hi, Sean. Tell Stan he's doing great. Looking way better than the kangaroo demo. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure that's Morgan. What's the what's the username? Morgan Weisling. No, that's the yeah. display name. M Weisling. M Weisling. Oh man, can't tell. I believe it's probably. I believe him. it's truly Morgan. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Morgan. But I'm <laughs> I'm I'm okay happy with it. I'm halfway happy with it. Um. Like, the neck, like, I mean, look at that awesome clinomastoid coming through here, you know, and all that, the, the cool shapes in here, like, you know, it's not going to look good until I at least get uh, some kind of indication of that, because it, I'm not capturing his masculinity, because a lot of those elements, like, you know, the, the big, what is it, the masseter muscle up there, that was a, an important element, and this in here. I got this part, kind of. I didn't even go on the forehead. Ah, oh, Jesus. So right here, there's a nice little dark shape. Leon's asking if Cynix has hosted a poker challenge. Yes, he, he also did. has. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the the big, big people, the big been, people, the big people in the, the YouTube community. Morgan His Weising, was Morgan Weising has not. Uh, He's a big person. Well, we're we're currently making a video with Morgan. Yeah, but he hasn't hosted a poker challenge. Well, I mean the big YouTubers, the two art oh. tubers, art tubers. You said big person. <laughs> We got the the uh, the mountain from Game of Thrones needs to oh, yeah. host a uh, poker challenge. He's a big person. Oh, yeah, Morgan says, "Yeah, it's me." <laughs> yeah, but is it really you? <laughs> <laughs> we need proof. Send a picture with today's newspaper and a banana, so we know. Oh, is he texting you? No, oh. I want to see if he is. Text me. <laughs> Prove it, Morgan. <laughs> uh, I'm so hungry, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so hungry. And I ate breakfast. I've got Mexican candy in uh, a okay. bag. <laughs> which, which one? Uh, chicles. Chicles? What is chicles. that? That's like the gum. Oh, okay. Gum? Yeah. <laughs> How is that going to You can fill swallow me it. Yeah. <laughs> You can eat some you know, gum. They, they put like sawdust in like protein shakes. You can you can have some gum. Oh my god. Sean. <laughs> uh, Eve is asking, what's your least favorite part of the face to draw? Uh, probably the ear. <laughs> it's just whatever you're currently working on. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, the hardest <laughs> is eyes. I already said that. But it's not my least favorite because I do enjoy it. Because like yeah. when you get it right, it's like really satisfying. Yeah, it's like you just got the soul. Um, I don't know. Ears are a lot easier, so they're actually maybe a little bit more fun. <laughs> I don't know, man, or or girl, woman. I don't know who said that. Uh, it was Laura, matter. but let me. I don't know, dude. Oh no, it was Eva. Eva, hey, is this my dog? <laughs> no. My dog's name is Eva. Also, my... This is Eva Meow, so this is... My brother just uh, proposed to his uh, now fiancé. Her name is Eva, too. Uh, <laughs> like, to your dog? Yeah, it's <laughs> my dog. They're getting married. So I'm not trying to render this ear. It God, that's so ugly. God. <laughs> I'm just rushing it so much. I'm trying to get like really basic shapes uh, in there. Yeah. Um, and it's just not working here. I think I just need to be more assertive. Just, just like go for Play it. it in. Yeah. Tell them who's show them who's boss. That like bold strokes. Everything is just like half sure of itself.
Morgan says, bring out the skull. He says, I love that little guy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love that little guy. He said that in his email. Um, yeah. He, he did. He drew. Oh, we still have to post that. He sent us a really awesome photo of his drawing. Oh, really? It's like the perfect advertisement of the Proko skull. <laughs> it's like his really cool drawing in the Proko sketchbook with another Proko sketchbook under it with the Proko logo showing <laughs> and then the skull right next to it on the little tripod. Oh, nice. And it's like signed Morgan Weiss. Like, uh. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> this is gold. Yeah, we got to post that. Or Morgan, maybe you can post that image in this thread under your own account. That way it could be in your gallery, too. Show them. Sean, at some point you're going to have to just stop me because I'm just going to keep going. Okay, do you want me to... Oh, stop you now? No, not right now. Do you want me to, like, karate chop you at, like, 3.30? At some point, but not right now. When I tell you what, I'll tell you when to stop. When you're ready to be stopped. Yeah. Okay. I'll just put your green tea on top of the face. Oh, it's like you. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Of my green tea. <laughs> but it's all all the ice has melted. Oh yeah. I got a venti today, thinking You'd I'm gonna need it. it. <laughs> yeah. And I just have forgotten to drink. Ventis are a double-edged sword. When you're doing a, a live stream, because you gotta pee. You gotta pee. I don't actually. I'm not a big peer. No. <laughs> That's that's a, that's a, a, a stand <laughs> fact, an interesting proto <laughs> fact. Ah. We'll put it on your Wikipedia page. Stan, <laughs> not, a big, not a peer, not a big peer. I thought you were interpreting it differently. Oh. I'll work more on this afterwards, and I'll post the final, guys. You can be able to see it. Oh, and the bottom plane. This is not. I haven't been thinking about the forms. Right. This whole thing here is a bottom plane. Put a little core shadow. Alex wants to know if we're going to raffle this drawing away to no. the people who have uh, posted questions. No. It's like, this is for me. We're not raffling this one away. <laughs> I used to raffle off like every drawing you I did. did. Yeah. It usually was like a Loomis head. Or yeah, yeah, it was like a little sketch. <clears throat> I guess you did do the like features. So it's like you get a nose. Those were like twenty-five minute drawings. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I used to raffle off a lot more. It's a good. Oh, let's still do that. At some point. Um, R. Turner is asking, do we have plans on having courses on landscape painting? Yeah. I believe yes. Yes, yeah. we do. Um, it's just, I think that's the plan for doing stuff like that would be after basics. Is Tiffany Mang going to do landscape stuff? She's doing gouache. Yeah, but landscape. Um, I don't know. We didn't, when okay. we talked about it last, uh, she was mostly talking about, she didn't say what subject matter. But I mean, it's going to be in there. Like, there's definitely going to be landscapes, because um, she does a lot of those. Yeah, she does mostly landscape, right? But... Yep. Um, 
Ion Mirror is asking um, if we have advice on texturing. Doing textures. That's a tough one because it it's not like some fundamental thing that you could just like learn. You know, it's it's really it's something you can only do after you have quite a bit of experience and you just kind of develop an eye and a taste for for that kind of stuff you know um and have experience with a medium to be able to control the texture of it in a way that makes sense it's yeah it's a tough one man um i think it, it it's all a matter of personal taste um and there's so many different types of textures you could put in. Yeah. I hate those eyes, man. <laughs> He's totally cross-eyed, right? Mor am, Morgan, is he, is he cross-eyed? The... <laughs> uh, which eye is it? It's both of them. There's both of them. This they're one, both, they're both they're pointing a little slightly... bit too far in. Mm. Um, well, I don't have time to fix that, obviously, but... I will fix it later. In Photoshop. I will fix it in Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. no, I'll and then fix post it that later. as the file. Yeah. God. Yeah, and as far as the, the texturing question goes, I know uh, Stephen Sabata, in his video that he did, towards the end he goes about texturing with kneaded erasers, and it was a pretty interesting technique that you can check out and try on your own. Um, this is more of a tech question, but HMK is asking, what cameras are you using? And we're using, I think, a GH5S, a Panasonic Lumix GH5S on both the cameras on us and on the art. It's a pretty good, pretty good camera. Knocking it back. Merrick's asking, do you always pick smooth paper over rough when drawing, or should you? Um, I mean, this is a really small drawing. So if I picked a really textured paper, I'd be really struggling with some details, right? Um, but the watercolor paper that I did this this one on All right this see see how much bigger this yeah. this drawing is um it's and it's it's texture is much stronger like you can see all that stuff um but it's okay in a bigger drawing <clears throat> yeah i think texture it's a matter of the scale of the texture versus the scale of the drawing and where your comfort level is with that. Um, I would push your boundaries a little bit and start being more comfortable with with a little bit smoother or a little bit rougher than, than you're, you're normally used to doing. Like I know I'm really uncomfortable going too smooth or too rough. It just, it's really strange. I have less control of the tools mm -hmm. Um, but it's nice to do that, even though I, you know, usually the results aren't as good. It's still nice to do that because it, it allows you to expand your range of what you're capable of. Um, yeah. Nice. Uh, Morgan says, you can stop. It was just the ear. That was... <laughs> <laughs> it was just the ear. Oh. Uh. Morgan, I still have ear. I'm so very self-conscious about my ears now because of you. <laughs> Morgan thinks I have weird ears. Do I have weird ears, you guys? I think it was you have very 
Straight. Straight ear? It's only the one ear. Is it yeah. this one? <laughs> yeah, it's that he ear. says it's like the a straight, straight line. Ear. Boop. And it's also very red right now. What is? <laughs> it's because it's like 75 to 80 degrees in this yeah. studio right now. So he says, yeah, unique ears. Thank you. <laughs> it's your defining characteristic. <clears throat> Um, Q. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> should I stop? There's, there's you like got, 20 million things yeah. still that I want to fix. This is a it's good, obviously not finished. Yeah, this, this is a good spot. It's you a, know, it's a, it's a at, fine enough spot to stop. Yeah, we're and at 27. Um, finish later. Yeah. yeah. Lots of things to fix in this drawing. Lots of little things not working. But at, like, I have to step back from it if I want to actually be able to fix these mm. these issues. Um, my least favorite part about it right now is the ear. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a cartoon ear in the wrong spot. It's the wrong shape, and it just. <laughs> You're like, hold on. Let me give. Let me give. Yeah, it looks better now. <laughs> it actually does look better now. Um, yeah, like and the, the, the back of the head is too is too big and poofy. Like he's got a smaller head. Um, just by leaning back, I'm seeing so many of these things. Yeah. So your next step, if you were say, like you're gonna take a break and finish this later, what, would you would you just like hold off? Get your eyes fresh and then come back to it. Um, and, yeah, uh, absolutely. I would take a break for sure and yeah. eat. Um, that's what I'm actually gonna do. <laughs> so, there you go. Nice. Oh yeah, that. I think that I think it, better. it looks looks solid. People will. You got to see the technique. Got to answer some questions. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you guys. Was there anything else I needed to do? Within the stream, um, we can tell people this photo's from the the graphite model pack. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, we talked we talked about that in the beginning, but uh, if you like if you like this guy in particular or others, there are more. Uh, yeah, Morgan did, he texted me. He said the same yeah. thing. Keep at it. The ear is all it needed. Well, I took the ear out, Morgan. Sorry. <laughs> it, well, all it needed is to not have an ear. Um, cool. Thanks, guys, so much. It was fun. I uh, hope you learned something, a, little, a new little technique. I know everyone's looking for a new technique. So, um, I'm too tired to do an outro. You want to do it? <laughs> what is the outro? Subscribe. Did Check you out our it? stuff. No, I have not. Yeah. Um, um, but, what's happening next week? I know the party's over. Oh. So the party, so the party's, party's over. Um, your what? face is probably getting smudged by. Oh, oh can you just hide that reference? Then? Sure thing. For the Wham, outro. bam, invisible and, man, and the euro. Um, what's going? What what is going on next week? Let's, we'll just end it with that. So we got the announcement for the new Preco challenge with Ethan Becker. Yeah. Um, we got more Scott Flanders course. We got more sculpting coming out. Um, we got a Court Jones demo, two-parter because it's so so long. Uh, we got uh, Ryan Benjamin. We got a sweet sweet Batman. It's gonna look awesome. Yeah, that's gonna be a little. That's a that's a longer demo that we're working on. Uh, but also he did a demo where he does a Loomis head. And then makes a comic face out of that Loomis head. Is that the third one? That's the second one. That's the second yeah, one. Yeah, so okay, that's cool. going to be closer than the Batman. I can show it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Dude. They were so good. So good. You guys got a taste of the uh, his little technique thing, but that was just like the first 10% of the footage he gave us. <laughs> yeah, he came to the studio and he recorded this stuff. So um, this is the one that's coming out Soon, right? Yeah. The next week? Uh, not next week, but soon-ish. Oh. oh, never mind. Ne <laughs> no, soon-ish. <laughs> and then after that one... Bam. This one. It's just a masterpiece. Uh, yeah. So good. Um, yeah, also. 
mm. show a little close up. Yeah, getting that, that red pencil and the oh red man, red pencil. boy, uh, punching through the screen. Yeah, do a close up of the other one. And then also, um, actually, Aaron Westerberg is oh, yeah. probably going to do a stream. Probably going to do a stream uh, next week. There's still some logistics to figure out, so it might be delayed, but probably next Friday. That's the current plan. Yeah. Anyway. So good. Woo! So there's a lot hey of good guys. stuff coming up. Yep. So Thanks for joining. Hope all you guys enjoy Live Vision X Live with all those free passes. And keep on posting on Proga.com. We love you guys. Yeah. Keep doing it. All right. All right. See Bye. you later.